మాట్లాడతారు కదా రిఫ్రెష్ చేయండి మీరు మాట్లాడింది ఇందులో వచ్చేస్తుందండి తీస్తాను తీస్తే వెళ్ళదు ఎందుకంటే దీంట్లో స్పీకర్ ఎన్ని బిల్ స్పీకర్స్ లేవు ఓకే ఇప్పుడు ఆడియో ఇన్పుట్ క్యాప్చరింగ్ తీసుకోవట్లేదు తీసేస్తే దాగిపోతుంది ఆడియో మిక్సర్ కొన్ని తీసి వస్తాను
Ravi at the Hallmark that is that is that is yeah yeah so then you are the present we'll start sir it's already three two shall we start sure. yep yeah ahead. yeah yeah very nice so dear participants hello all yes am I audible yes ma'am hello hello Go ahead. yeah 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 yeah. Good afternoon, um, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please uh, uh, mute yourselves. Thank you all for your response. And uh, on behalf of uh, Andhra University College of Engineering Autonomous uh, and uh, JNTU University College of Engineering Vijayanagaram, I welcome you all for the third uh, day of uh, FDP on data science and its applications in STEM. Today we have Mr. Ravi from Hallmark Solutions, Vishakapattam, as a resource person. It is my privilege to introduce you, introduce uh, Mr. Ravi to you all. Mr. Ravi, he has done his master's in mathematics from Usmania University, Hyderabad. And he is uh, one of the highly accomplished uh, visionary technology leader over the past two decades of uh, IT in the IT field of IT. And his IT experiences has ranged, is ranging from various uh, industry domains. He has over 15 years of uh, uh, US experience working at AT&T and as part of AT&T he played key roles in data analytics projects involving data related to billing, retail, CRM, network performance and quality. Seasoned, he is a seasoned uh, solution architect for many years in dealing with the three Vs. I think you know about three Vs of big data, velocity, volume, and variety. And he is passionate about technology and uh, keeps interest in exploring emerging technologies and trends in the space of data science and cloud. He is the founder of Hallmark Solutions at Shakapatnam, India, based startup focusing on cloud, open source, machine learning, and AI-based solutions in the area of data analytics. OCR workflow automation. He is passionate about mentoring and training, and he has conducted multiple workshops and training sessions for students and faculty in the area of data science, machine learning, and cloud. And this is in a nutshell about him. And I'm really happy that he is really he's based at Vishakapatnam. And uh, Mr. Ravi, uh, we welcome you all for this uh, uh, hands-on uh, session. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you once again, and I uh, heartily, sincerely, and heartily welcome you for this uh, workshop. Thank you. Over to Mr. Ravi Kiran. Ravi. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So, uh, is it mostly faculty that's on this call? Uh, sir, uh, yeah. For the benefit of Mr. the presenter, uh, today's resource person, sir, uh, it is a nationwide, uh, in fact, uh, FDP. Okay. Wherein we have 1,650. Actually, it was 1,700 odd. Okay. So we have removed some people. It's 1600 plus odd I have registered. Very good. And as you know, with the Google Meet, we have only 250 to 300 uh, people. Okay. Uh, it's, it's coming only up to 250. And the rest we have uh, giving YouTube live streaming. Oh. Okay. And uh, yeah, we have giving YouTube live streaming. And uh, we have made sure that maximum of the participants who come to Google Meet are faculty. Okay, good, good. That's okay. good to know. Yeah, but uh, if at all any chance students and business scholars, it is not an issue, but maximum are faculty here. Okay, okay. great. So Wonderful. it's for your uh, information. And That's yesterday they had the basics of Python and all hands on experience only. Okay. So you can continue with as we have discussed, we can uh, continue with that. Great, okay. great. Yeah. So, thank you. Uh, thank you. That, that's good introduction. Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to be part of this. And um, as um, uh, Latagar explained, uh, I have many years of experience uh, uh, in the 
in the data analytics and data science space and i keep interest uh, in uh, emerging technologies and i do a lot of work in python so today i will be primarily focusing on uh, numpy uh, to start with and followed by that we will uh, get into pandas and uh, and uh, after pandas we will do a bit of uh, data visualization and then followed by that we will do exploratory data analysis right so now um, uh, do, do you all see my screen no Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Visible, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay. So, yes, uh, great, great, great. So, uh, most of what we do today will be in. Uh, uh, it, it will be in Jupyter Notebook. I'm sure you guys uh, uh, got exposed to Jupyter Notebook yesterday, right? Are you Are you familiar with Jupyter Notebook? Did you guys uh, use Jupyter Notebook in yesterday's class? Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. yes. Sure, sir. Right, right, right. So basically, Jupyter Notebook gives us uh, an interactive way to execute uh, Python, and uh, uh, and it, it gives you inline help and everything. So we'll be for the most part we'll be using Jupyter Notebook, and at the end of the call, whatever we are discussing in the call, I'll be sharing those Jupyter Notebooks uh, to Lalita Garu, and she will forward it to you. Right. So let us get started with uh, NumPy. Okay. So we all uh, know arrays. It is, uh, is what we frequently use for all kinds of things. Um, so again, uh, in um, uh, in Python, unlike your Java and C, uh, whatever you learned yesterday, which is like dictionaries, lists, and all that, they are very dynamic. I mean, you can just put anything in them. Uh, you, you take a list, and each element can be anything. Or <clears throat> you take a tuple, each, each element can be anything, right? Uh, so, uh, for handling uh, more complex data types like images or speech or image uh, video streams or anything like that, uh, which are extensively used uh, in uh, complex Python use cases like machine learning, artificial intelligence, image processing, uh, voice recognition, anything like that. Obviously, when your volume is higher, you need uh, data structures that are more optimized for handling higher volumes and uh, specific data types. Right. So most probably, whatever you had learned yesterday, you must have not come across the concept of data type. Right. That the thing that we start with in C or Java, where you define a variable first with a data type. But in Python, no, you just start using variables. Right. But NumPy, unlike uh, the basic uh, Python data types like your lists and dictionaries, NumPy arrays have data type. So like for example, if you have uh, one element for each. Uh, uh, pixel and if that pixel is a grayscale, which is you, you can just live with 8 to 32 bytes. Right? So that way you can define an array and then you can define the data type for that array, right? And you can have multi dimensional arrays also. And it doesn't mean NumPy will stop you from using dynamic arrays where I have each element as a different data type. You, you have all the flexibility that you have with lists and dictionaries and other things, but NumPy has something more. You, you can define the data type and you can. Optimize that data structure for a specific data type. Right? That's one reason why NumPy is extensively used in every other uh, framework, uh, whether you are doing image processing or anything like TensorFlow or PyTorch or anything like that. Under the hood, it's all NumPy arrays. So that's one reason why NumPy uh, is is very important once you are doing anything beyond the basic Python. Right? Now, one of the other things. Uh, uh, I'm sure the, the concept of slicing is covered yesterday. So, but uh, again, I'll briefly touch on it. So, now slicing is like, let's say, if I have a multi-dimensional array where I'm trying to um, uh, cut a slice of it, then your list, uh, your basic data types like list, only allow you to slice on one dimension. NumPy lets you slice on multiple dimensions, right? So, that that's another uh, uh, neat feature of uh, NumPy, right? And uh, then <coughs> your um, uh, your NumPy not only this, but uh, you you have a, a extensive uh, library of functions that come packaged with NumPy. Uh, with those functions, you can do a lot of interesting things which you cannot uh, uh, do unless you're writing your own code with uh, simpleness. We'll, we'll look at each of these things uh, in detail as we go along, right? So first things first. Uh, again, with your basic Python, uh, unless you install something like Anaconda or one of these uh, packages, uh, NumPy is not part of basic Python. You need to install. You need to set pip install NumPy, 
right? I won't touch on the pip install part. That's a simple thing. I'm sure uh, uh, you have yeah. agreed with it already. So usually you simply say import numpy as usually that np is is typically the industry standard alias for uh, numpy, right? So in this case, I'm saying import numpy as np, right? Now if I'm trying to uh, define a array, right? I can give a regular list. So if if I'm defining a numpy array, I can I can give a regular list and I can define that numpy array, right? Now uh, for a for a array, you can look at the size and data type. You see this data type is same thirty two, right? And I can if if I want, I can give a data type here while I'm defining. Um, I can give uh, data type as uh, float or one of the other types. Okay. So, uh, flow 64. Let me do in 64. Okay. So, so, so there are there are other options. Uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll list the. If I am looking at NP, there's another great thing about uh, your Python. So, like for example, I don't remember what the exact data type is. I can simply say dir of uh, that NumPy package, and I should be able to see all those data types that are uh, defined. Usually, I think it's in 32 or something. They, those are all defined already. I'll, I'll show you that. Do you see here? int 32, int 64, these are all the data types. Instead of you remember, you can just directly use them. Similarly for float, the different data types. So this is the real beauty of uh, uh, Python. So do you see this float, float 16, float 32, float 64? So instead of me trying to remember what it should be, you can simply say type equal to So D type is available. Again, it is D type. Let us see if I don't remember what it is D type of type. In um, in uh, Jupyter Notebook, you can use uh, Shift Tab. Shift Tab will kind of open the help. So it's hard for all of us to remember all the possible syntaxes and all the possible parameters and all the values. So uh, to make it simple, your uh, Jupyter Notebook has uh, Shift Tab. Shift Tab anywhere. Any function that you're on, you can simply press Shift Tab and it will show the complete help for that function. Right? These are some tricks that you can use. So in this case, I forgot whether it is in 62 or in 32. So then I looked at the help for uh, uh, NumPy and then it is in 64. Then I, I gave accidentally type instead of D type. I looked at the help and it is D type. Right? So those are the kind of things that you can do. Now if I'm looking at the D type for that variable, it's in 64, as you can see here. Right? So uh, you can define arrays of different types, and uh, then your uh, array can be any size. It, it allows multi-dimensional arrays, OK? And uh, then uh, you uh, the, the common things like uh, the size and the data type and all that, you, you can access as attributes. Okay. Now let us go into real fun stuff. So NumPy has something called, uh, do you remember the range? I'm sure you guys looked at the range function yesterday. Okay. So let us look at a range. Now, if you look at the range, before I go here, let me just do a range. Right? Let us say if I'm doing list, list of range of 10. Right? So this gives me a list of numbers from 0 to 9. Right? But what if I want to generate a list of uh, 0.5.5? Right? That's not there in regular uh, list. Whereas with NumPy, there is something called A range. Here, I can say 1, 10, 0 0.5 or 0 0.25, whatever uh, uh, fraction I want to use. So here with A range, I can generate a list of numbers between 1 and 10, 
10 not including always as is the case with uh, range uh, 10 is not included it starts with the first index up to the second index and it goes by a step of 0 0.5 right and this comes very handy when you need to generate a, a sequence of numbers uh, with fractions right similarly there is another interesting utility function for lin space lin space where if I say I want to generate uh, 20 uh, members between 10 and 20, I can simply use lin space. So a range and lin space are two very uh, useful functions to generate evenly spaced uh, sequence of numbers between uh, given two numbers. So in this case, it starts from 10, goes up to 20, including 10 and 20. By the way, unlike a range, lin space includes both 10 and 20, and it generates 20 numbers. Right. So uh, those are the two very uh, frequently used functions to generate numbers. Now, let us uh, uh, generate an array that we will uh, uh, use for uh, uh, applying various NumPy functions. Okay. Before I go there, let me just introduce you to there is a uh, sub package for NumPy called random. That random has uh, there, there is a function called random which generates a random integer uh, under the number that you give. Now, if I say I say one between one to hundred, if I want to generate an array of three, three comma four, so you can use this random. Okay. Now we generated a, uh, a array of size three or four with number numbers between 1 and 100 and that is now let us take this array okay now uh, so now that we have an array guys feel free to ask any questions because numpy is very important so if you are going into data science if you are going to image processing no matter what you are doing you are going to play with numpy and pandas a lot so that's the core uh, uh, under the word engine that you will be using so if any of you have any questions feel free to raise so now am i audible enough Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Good, good, good. So now uh, you must have uh, used the slicing uh, yesterday on list. So, so slicing is where I'm saying, hey, give me all the numbers up to uh, index two in rows and index two in columns. It's just these these four on the very top, 75, 63, 41, 19, right? So this part it returns. So this is called slicing. The specific technique of getting whichever piece you want is called slicing. Now, uh, as I told you, you can only slice on one dimension when you're creating regular lists. But when you're using NumPy, you can slice on any number of dimensions. So here, you, even if I have 10 dimension array, I can slice on all the dimensions using this syntax. Right? And uh, again, slicing, you can, uh, uh, you, you can start from any number, go up to any number. And as is the case with uh, lists, let us say if I want to uh, get alternate numbers, say the step, the step would work. Okay. So step is like, OK, instead of getting me uh, uh, every consecutive number, I want to uh, leave one number in the middle. So if in this case, it takes uh, 75 and then goes to 19. Similarly, if you look at the rows, after 75, it skipped 41. It directly went to 37. right? So uh, this is again, this is the slicing. Slicing, you can give the second parameter, which will um, uh, define the step. And uh, not sure if uh, you guys uh, happen to see this syntax, but if you see minus one, it kind of reverses. If you use minus one as a uh, minus one is like uh, instead of traversing from the beginning, I want to traverse from the end kind of. So that's the minus one thing, right? In this case, it kind of flipped both the rows and columns. If you see here, eight at the very bottom became the very first element. Similarly, uh, the 75 that's at the very top uh, went to the very bottom, right? So this uh, third element can be used to do a lot of different tricks, where I am saying just traverse from the end, both in rows and both in columns. If I only traverse in rows, then um, again, the, the the, the rows stay intact, but uh, columns is what it flips. Okay. So anyway, so those are few interesting tricks. Now, when it comes to NumPy arrays, there are uh, few interesting uh, things that you can do. 
right? So we look at slicing, right? See, one of the other uh, uh, features of uh, NumPy is you can access So in this case, I'm saying, hey, I want to access, instead of giving slicing or something, let us say I want to access first row and uh, third row, right? So I can use this index like this, OK? So let me print the array first, and then I'll do it again. OK, now if you see this array, I'm saying, hey, get me the first row and the third row, right? So if you see here, it, it brought this row 75 and this row, right? Now within that row, I can possibly uh, say if I just want to uh, get the last uh, two columns, so I can simply do like this. Wherein it brought this last two columns from those two rows, right? Now with this slicing, you can also do I can I can repeat. Let us say for some reason, if I just want to repeat the data, especially in in images and other things, where if I just want to duplicate certain section of the image again, I can just take that those rows uh, rows of pixels that I want to repeat, and I can just uh, copy them again, right? Where in this case, I'm just adding the uh, adding those indexes again. And by the way, OpenCV is a very popular image processing library. We use it uh, in our OCR tool. So that tool, under the hood, it uses NumPy arrays. So you, you just access the image as, as a big uh, map of uh, pixels, right? So this is uh, another way of accessing uh, your uh, arrays using indexes. Again, you can use the indexes on both rows and uh, columns. Right? But when you're using with columns, again, if you're giving an array again, it better be the same number of, um, so let us say if I just, uh, give one great it just uh, brings the first index in this case so if you are looking at uh, uh, so let me before i do this now if i want to give only bring the uh, first column right so 63 61 see it, it only brought that first column now if i want to give more than one index it better be compatible with uh, compatible with my so i i, I cannot uh, if let us say if i have four indexes here i better give four indexes here right this need to the number of uh, first indexes and the number of second indexes the number should be compatible if you simply say one it just brings the Index one from four four rows, but if you are giving uh, it as a list, then it brings those specific elements. So in this case, it is uh, zero and one. Zero and one is sixty-three. Do you see the sixty-three here? Similarly, two and uh, two. Two and uh, two is sixty-three. Uh, two and two. Yeah, zero one two. The uh, zero one two. Right, sixty-seven. So. Uh, it, it, it brings those uh, elements in that order. So you, you just need to make sure that these two are compatible. Now, there is something else more interesting about NumPy, which really makes it very interesting, uh, very powerful. There is something called broadcasting. Now, let like us say if I say A plus 10, you see this A plus 10? I just simply said plus 10, and it just added that 10 to every element in that list. Okay? So, that's very uh, powerful, where you're trying to apply certain operation uh, to every element in a list. So uh, you, you can you, you can just say plus 10, or you, you can do multiplication or whatever. Then it just applies to everything. Now, if I want to, So if you see here, if I want to check for only the even numbers, in this case, I'm saying, hey, uh, check uh, uh, check for the reminder when divided by 2, and if that is equal to 0. And if I want to only get even numbers from this list, I can just do that. Right? Where I, um, I'm saying, get me every element from A, 
where this condition satisfies. So basically, what it does is it just uh, supplies this condition and then gets this list and then wherever it is true, it returns those elements. In this case, if you see here, so it is uh, first row, last element, last but one element in second row, and uh, the last element in third row, right? So those are the three elements it returns. Okay. Any, anyone has any question? I hear some noise. Is that a background noise or is that someone trying to ask a question? Hello, I request all the participants to mute yourselves, please. And do not switch on your cameras also. Am I audible? Yes, madam, you're audible. I'm just waiting for the noise to go away. Mr. Lokaya, uh, please switch off your video and uh, mute your audio also. Yes, please do maintain that. This is a request from the organizers to the participants. Please do not create any unnecessary noise. Okay, sir, please continue. Okay, great. So this is how you can identify elements that satisfy certain condition. Now, um, th this comes really um, handy when you are uh, uh, massaging a lot of data, uh, especially in image processing or anything like that, where you are trying to identify elements that uh, satisfy certain criteria. Right. Okay, great. Now, um, so the other thing is, uh, so I briefly talked about uh, random, right? So, np dot random dot. Right. So when I execute this. Each time I execute this, I'll get a different set of values, right? So there is a something called np dot random dot seed, wherein I'm setting the seed. Once I set the seed, then my behavior of random uh, again. This is I'm just getting an array, but if I, instead of array, if I just uh, say I uh, want to get a random in for a given seed, it will always return the same value. So the seed is to define whatever is it is using as a basis for generation of the numbers. So it, it defines the the, uh, the base number that it is using to generate the random numbers, right? And then we looked at uh, dot random dot. Uh, there are various things. Random dot rand uh, ten. So if I say rand of ten, it just uh, generates uh, uh, multiple numbers between zero and one, right? How many were numbers I give? In this case, I said uh, random of ten. So it generated ten numbers. There is a n rand n which generates a, a, a standard normal distribution with a mean zero and a variance one. So this rand n is um, uh, is to generate a, a normal distribution, and uh, rand is to generate uh, just random numbers between uh, zero and one. Okay. okay. Now. So once I generate these numbers, now let us say if I keep these numbers in uh, a array. Now, let us say I, I just create uh, 20 numbers, right? Um, now, So I can reshape. So reshape is also again very powerful, where I have a continuous sequence of 20 numbers, which I reshape into a uh, four by five array. Okay. So in this case, let us say if I call it X. Right. Then, so once you have two-dimensional, uh, again we we did not uh, look at uh, the simple uh, axis. I can simply uh, give indexes and just access elements using the indexes. Or we can do any of those other things that we looked at earlier, uh, where, where we are uh, uh, giving uh, slicing with uh, uh, the indexes and getting a subset of the array. Right? So any questions so far? No, sir. Good. Now, let us look at something more interesting. Okay? Now, let us say I'm looking at this x. Okay? 
now when i'm looking at x dot max right so it is x dot max is 99 right now what if i want to get a maximum in each row instead of an absolute maximum in this entire array because most of the times when you are uh, dealing with matrices you're in you're in massaging one row at a time right so to help that there is something called so if you see here, uh, by the way, access equal to zero. Sir, can you explain X of one two again? This guy here. Are you talking no. about this? Are you talking about line fifty six? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So line fifty six, you are giving the index. Uh, the indexes start with zero. So in this case, I am saying index one, which is uh, second row. And then in the in columns index three, which is third column. So it is ninety nine here. So it is if you're when you're trying to access your uh, uh, your array using indexes. So this is how you can do it. Okay. There is another way to do it also. They both re uh, lead to the same thing. So now let us say if I am doing one, right? It returns what ninety nine. Now if I am doing two, it returns. See, we should do the same thing. Is that clear now? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So uh, this is your your uh, again. You can do it this way. You cannot. This doesn't work with your uh, regular list. So NumPy uh, gives you a lot of flexibility that way. Okay. Now uh, again, uh, coming back to the, the aggregate functions, right? So you can. Uh, you, you can again. Th these functions are on NP also. Also play, say numpy dot max, right? I can say access equal to zero. Now when I say access equal to zero, that is, it's along the um, uh, along the x-axis. So if you see here, it it returns five values. So it is first column seventy seven, second column sixty three, third column ninety nine, right? So it goes along the x-axis. When you say access equal to zero, it goes along the x-axis and then gives you a max of each column. Right. Then similarly, if I do a max of uh, axis equal to one, it goes along the y-axis and um, uh, and uh, gets a max of each row. So in this case, it returned four four values: 77, 99, 69, 49. Right. So that's the axis equal to zero versus axis equal to one. Now this axis equal to zero, axis equal to one can be applied on there are a bunch of uh, different functions. Right. Min, right? So min max sum. This is min. Right? Then sum. Right? Where I'm trying to add all the um, all the values in each column independently. Or I'm trying to have, if I'm doing min, I'm getting the minimum value in each column. So access equal to zero applies operation on column. Access equal to one applies the operation on rows. Any question on this, sir? Can you explain 63, 63, 63, sir? Oh, 63. Sure. Yeah. So if you look at 63, so what we did it. Let let me just uh, put x here. Okay. So if you look at 63. So we did max of x axis equal to zero. So it's going along the x-axis. Okay, on each column, it's trying to get a max. In this case, in the first column, 77 is the max. Second column, 63 is the max. Third column, 99 is the max. You see the numbers here? Okay. Yeah. 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 Does it make sense now? Right. The same thing. If you if, if you are looking at the uh, same thing in the min again, right? So each column, one is the min in the first column, ten is the min in the second column, forty nine is the min in the third column. So it is the same thing again. And similarly, the sum sum is also adding up all the numbers in each column. Okay, zero. 
Is that clear? Can we move on? Excuse me, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Good, what good. is the meaning of S there? We can take any variable. It is just a variable name. A uh, which one? A X. X. X is I created X here. So if you see here, I created X. Uh, where oh, is we that? Are yeah. Do you see here? I created X. Oh. So in 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 this case, I can simply say Ravi equal to X. And I, I can I can just use uh, Ravi instead of X, and it, so it's, it's X is just a variable. Sir, sir, excuse yes. me. Here, axis is equal to one. What is the meaning, sir? Axis one, axis zero. So axis zero. See, by default, if I don't say axis, it just takes that entire array. It doesn't care rows or columns. It just does a min, max, sum on the entire array. Right. Okay, okay. So whereas when I am saying axis equal to zero, it uh, applies that same operation min or a max or a sum along the columns. So it, uh, okay. if, if I am saying uh, axis equal to zero, so let me. So you can see here, when I say axis equal to zero, it sums up. Uh, let me do a min rather than a sum. Right. So if you see here, min, min of first column one, min of second column ten. Okay. Right. So with axis, if I don't give axis, it just gives me the one min across all the elements in the array. Right. So that's what axis does. It gives you flexibility to access your uh, arrays across certain dimension, either along rows or columns. Of course, it, we are talking about two dimensions. If it's multi dimensions, then you have multiple uh, accesses. Sir, you are saying axis one, sir, zero and one. You are putting in some case one. Yeah, if you do one, it can it does it along the rows. Okay. If you say axis equal to one, if you see here, it took uh, it returned twenty three for the first row. That's the minimum. Okay, okay. So you are consider rows axis equal to one. For, to consider rows, it's axis equal to one. Okay, take minimum or maximum, whatever it may be. Correct. I would say, I mean, for uh, to remember it easily. I would look at it more as axis is zero is going along the x-axis, the first axis. Axis equal to one is y-axis, that is the second axis. Just remember it that way. That is, you you go one step at a time on on x-axis when axis equal to zero, and do a min or a max or a sum on that column. And uh, similarly, if your axis equal to one, you go along the y-axis one element one row at a time and do your magic and return the number. Okay. Just remember it that way. It's easy. Okay. Because typically, when you are giving indexes in uh, arrays, when I am trying to access uh, array elements using indexes, the first uh, uh, index is a row and second index is a column. But whereas here, the axis works a little differently. So to make it easy, just remember it that way. Axis equal to zero, you are walking around x-axis. Axis equal to one, you are walking along y-axis. Okay. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, oh, right, sir. Okay. So, one of the other things is, do you remember, like I talked about uh, broadcasting, right? So, when I say um, a plus ten, it applies this operation on every element in the array, right? Now, there will be scenarios where I need to. Uh, Broadcast where I instead of applying the same number to all of it, if I say 10, 20, 30, 40, right? So it kind of, if you see here, it um, uh, it applies this row uh, where the broadcast is applied one row at a time, where it adds 10 to the first column, 20 to the second column, 30 to the third column, 40 to the fourth column. So it's one not four become one one uh, uh, one. So yeah. So the second element is the twenty nine became forty nine, right? So uh, your your broadcast you can apply it at the row level or column level. Okay. Similarly, 
you can apply the the broadcast at the column level also so instead of uh, you you have three columns right so let us say if i am reviewing the columns it's smart enough it will uh, run so if you see here you can just give me a second it's uh, it added uh, 10 to the second row just give me a second i'm looking at it so 20 to the uh, third row just give me a second Yeah, yeah, there you go. So if you are looking at A, it added uh, 10 to the first row, 20 to the second row, 30 to the third row. Yeah, that's how it should behave. Sorry, I, so I was looking at the previous edition. Yes. So is, a, is it a in-place computation? That means original array is modified by this? No, good question. No, no it's not. It's not in-place. It, okay. uh, it is only returning, if you want to save it, I should say A equal to A plus. Good question. OK, so similarly, when you are doing a row level thing, if you compare uh, row level, so when I'm adding 10, 20, 30, 40, so if you see here, this is the original array. So 75 plus 10, 85, uh, 63 plus 20, 83, 19 plus 30, 49, right? So you, are, uh, you can apply the broadcast at the row level or you can apply the broadcast at the column level. Any questions on broadcasting? Sir, hello. Yes, yes, go ahead. Sir, how can we add a single number a number to a particular index uh, uh, along the array? Say so it again. Suppose I wish yeah. to add four. So suppose I wish to uh, add uh, ten to forty-four only. How can we add that? Ten to forty. Yeah. Sir. Uh, how can we okay, add a single okay. number sure. only to only to a single uh, particular index uh, value in the array? Very good question. Very good question. Okay, let us do it. So, uh, in in this case, we'll uh, so here what I'll do is in your case it is uh, row one, uh, column two, right? So row one, column two. If I want to uh, assign a value to it, I can simply say plus equal to 10. So it was 44 before, it will become 54 now. Okay. Okay. And not only that, not only that, but that leads into a different topic. Let, let me even uh, go to that. So now let us say if I want to add, so do you see this? So let us say if I want to add 10 to all four of those elements, right? I can say, I can update all four. Now, all four of them, do you see here? All of them are updated. You can use the slicing and indexing and everything that we learned so far to modify any range of numbers. This, this comes really handy. Let us say if I want to make a image where certain section I want to just make it black, right? Just want to remove every all the background. I can just give, take that subset indexes for that area, and I can just simply assign zero, and it all becomes black in the image. Small submission, sir. Uh, yes. While you are displaying the result, the original arrow area can also be displayed so that we can easily check the operation. Sir. Yeah, yeah, I am doing it. In fact, if you see here, I, I yeah. this is the original and this is the modified. Yes. Yeah, so this, that's the reason I displayed it before. Uh, I no, no, the... even EF to comma two, uh, yeah, because we are unable to see the original array. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. that's the reason why sometimes we are getting confused. Oh, no, uh, yeah. yeah, no issues. Thank you so much. Sure. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, good. good. Now let me go to. Hello, yes, sir. Sir, uh, yes. Hello. sir. Can I work with uh, sir, yes, or dictionaries? Yes, 
sorry repeat your question sir here only sir we are work with sir lists uh, or array uh, can i work with sir uh, dictionaries sets uh, no array and uh, numpy array is only for arrays okay so dictionaries and all those remain in your uh, traditional data types your regular python data types hmm. so this is only for arrays okay okay good so um, now let us look at few operations sir 77 and 78 can you explain sir ऑलरेडी <laughs> So, sure. uh, if at all you are not, uh, man, it is okay. But uh, see, sir, because at uh, four yeah, forty, yeah. four thirty to four forty, we have a break. Or after six fifty, sure, sure. also they can ask. Huh? Okay, sir. Right. Okay. I mean, I need to definitely wrap up by six fifty. I have something else uh, after that. So, but anyway, uh, no issues. We can take questions if they if they don't take too much time. I'll handle them. If not, I'll keep it to that. So, guys, uh, please Hello, mute yourself. Mute yourself. Okay. Hello, sir. So, uh, yeah. Please uh, don't forget to share the code, sir. So, so that only we can practice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I plan to. I plan to share this entire notebook. Whatever I am uh, going over here, I'll share this notebook. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. So, uh, the, to your question, someone asked about seventy-seven, seventy-eight. Here, I am trying to add the entire uh, row. If you see here, I am adding uh, one. Uh, I am giving ten, twenty, thirty, forty. <laughs> Where I want to add 10 to the first column, I want to add 20 to the second column, I want to add 30 to the third column. So that's what we are doing here. So if you are doing here, if you are looking at this array, right? So I created a different array. Just give me a second. Let me just a second. I assign a different value to that variable. Just give me a second. So, let us say if I am trying to add n um, to first column, twenty to third column. So if you see here. You you can see that it is applying this uh, addition um, by row. So I am adding fifty to the last column. Did that did that address your question? Similarly, if I want to add ten uh, to all the uh, columns in first row, so I can use this syntax. This is called broadcasting. So in this, I'm broadcasting by row or broadcasting by column. Okay, great. So now let us move on to something else. Now let us say I'm defining these two arrays, right? So uh, in this case, it's a two by three array, two two by three arrays I'm defining, right? So now. If you see here, np dot concatenate. So in this case, I need to close it in another set of uh, brackets. So in this case, I am concatenating them by Uh, rows. Now, if I want to concatenate them by columns, so 
it just one next to the other horizontally. Okay, so concatenate is one option, and there are few other such options. That is np dot um, uh, h stack. Okay, similarly there is np dot v stack. V stack is for vertical stacking. Right. So whatever you do with H stack, V stack can also be done with concatenate with that access parameter, right? When I say access equal to one, then it is like a H stack and access equal to zero is V stack. You you'll frequently find these things um, in uh, uh, in uh, NumPy uh, operations, right? Then so there is something else. Uh, It is split. I can split array into two, right? So it splits along the the rows, and um, so uh, you, you can uh, if you, if you have multiple uh, 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 the rows. Let us say if I had four, it would have created two by two. If I as only have two rows, it just created uh, one row by three columns, right? So that's another thing. So we can split arrays, we can concatenate them, and then uh, we can broadcast operations on them. And uh, what else did we look at? We did the broadcast, and uh, we we applied uh, min max uh, aggregate functions along the different axes, uh, along the rows, along the columns. We did that. And uh, there are few utility functions like np dot once. Let us say if I just want to create a five by five one by one uh, uh, integer matrix, right? So you can just simply say np dot once, or you you can just create. Let us say I'm I'm creating a just a blank. Uh, this comes handy when you're trying to create some kind of an image, uh, say monochrome image with zeros and ones, right? So I can I can just create a empty image. Uh, with uh, using the zeros and ones, right? So if I want to create a, want to just create an integer uh, array, I can simply use this d type. D type is uh, optional parameter. If you don't give, uh, each function has a default defined, but you can always give your own d type, and uh, I can simply say int, and then create an integer array. Okay, so uh, again, there is something called uh, i, np dot i, form of i. I is basically the diagonal would be one, and everything else will be zero. Again, here also I can uh, give detail uh, to create an integer array. Right. So those are few interesting things, and uh, there are few additional ones. Uh, So let us say if I want to um, iterate to array elements, right? So nd iter um, will will help you just iterate through one element at a time. Now, but this one doesn't give you the index, right? But if you want to look at the index, then you can use Enumerate. So if you see enumerate, uh, you can uh, take index from i. Where I'm getting index, this is my index. Zero comma zero is one. Zero comma one is two. So where I'm iterating through this entire array. So if I'm if I'm just using nd iter, I don't have access to the index. Whereas when I'm using nd uh, enumerate, I have access to index also. Again, enumerate. Uh, you you must have seen the enumerate function, right? Let us say for uh, index comma i in uh, reg regular enumerate. Th this applies on less. Okay. So this is like I'm enumerating through a, a list that I'm manufacturing using range, and then I'm looking at uh, to to make it more interesting. Let me. So I'm creating a list of numbers from 10 to 20. And then I'm enumerating over it. So similar to the regular enumerate, which is part of core Python, so nd enumerate uh, will 
ND enumerate will enumerate over the array, NumPy array. Okay, so these are all packaged into NumPy. So that's the beauty about NumPy. NumPy is just that one array with uh, with everything else that you need to play with that array packaged into that NumPy package. Any questions on this? Any questions sir, on NumPy? Didn't get this, Hello? correct? Didn't get this, sir. One one three, line number. One one three. Yeah, one one three is nothing but if you are no, looking at one one two. Yeah. Oh, one one three is nothing. It's just uh, traversing through that array A. Hang on. Uh, no, sir. This N D enumerate. Right. So this array, do you see, is one two three four five six. Now I'm just looping through this array and printing uh, one element at a time. Just looping through this entire array as if it's like one-dimensional list. That is ND iter, right? So if I am doing the same thing on B, B has uh, higher values, right? See, it's just iterating through all the elements in that array and printing them. In this case, this is the B. B is the array which has 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's just looping through it and printing all the values in that array. Okay. Great. So now, so these are some tools that come packaged with your NumPy, and uh, that that make your life a lot easier. If not, each of these would need few lines of code. That's that's why Python is so popular in the machine learning and data science and artificial intelligence space because it not only comes with your uh, uh, very versatile data types and data structures, but it also packaged with a lot of functions which make your life easy and uh, you can do a lot with little code, right? Because a lot of these are built into those packages. Okay. Now NumPy is the backbone of uh, anything that you use beyond the basic Python. Great. Now let us take a quick look at uh, Pandas. Okay. What is Pandas? So Pandas, again, that's Pandas is another very versatile tool package that's used a lot in uh, data science. And um, Pandas is nothing but let us say you're trying to load some data you know, from a CSV file or a text file into uh, say Excel, right? So why we use Excel? Because you can play with plain text files as if they are like tables where I can just uh, apply formulas and I can sort, I can, uh, 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 I can do some charting and I can apply some operations like uh, plus multiplication formulas and everything. That's why we all love Excel. Whatever reasons you love Excel for, the same reasons programmers love Pandas, right? So I, I, I have a big file and I don't have uh, any table or somewhere I, I can dump it. I can just want to quickly read the file. I want to explore the data in that file. I want to see what kind of data is in each columns. And I want to do some arithmetic. I want to add some new columns which are derived from other columns. Or I want to, to join data from two files. All this can be done in Pandas. So technically, you are playing with a plain vanilla CSV or a text file as if it is like a table. Now, what makes it even more versatile is your Pandas can not only read CSV, it has ability to read uh, even uh, tables that are uh, embedded in a HTML page that's on some website where you can just give URL and, and scoop a table. Or you can read Excel files. You can read plain CSV files you can do a lot of different things and you can write to files. So not only reading from different things, but you can also write the data to a file where you massage it, data, you want to save it for future, you can just write to a file. So that's what really makes Pandas a, a very good friend of Python developers who are into data science. Okay, so any questions? Good, so um, again, uh, import uh, pandas as lp right again lp sorry pd pd is the uh, nickname of uh, pandas and the uh, lp is the nickname of uh, numpy right these two go hand in hand and we'll do a little bit of matplotlib also here so let me import uh, matplotlib also Okay, we'll, we'll use PLT later, but I want to just import everything and keep it ready. Okay, great. Now, 
let me uh, create a uh, i think uh, we had a, a big array somewhere bear with me guys Here you go. Let us take X, right? So, um, by the way, pandas has two things. One is a series and a data frame. Okay. So series, you can look at series as your dictionary. So from your uh, uh, from your core Python. So whatever you are used to as a dictionary, right? So that you can uh, consider that as a series. We we'll look at it. Okay. So now I'll create a series. Just give me a second. I have some examples ready. So now let us say I have this list, okay, names, and then I'm creating a series with it. So without uh, index, let me first create it without the index. Okay. Now if you look at it, so the series has has uh, these four values. Okay, now each of these values I can access as if I'm accessing a uh, dictionary. Remember, like we used to have dictionary key and value. So in this case, the the index of the column. This is a single row. Uh, uh, you, you you only have one column array kind of a thing, right? Let us say you have a table with single column. That's a series, right? So in this series, if I want to just access uh, a certain uh, value, I can use the uh, the uh, the number of the row. Or the index of the row as the key, and I'll get the value, right? And very similar. Now let us say if I want to um, assign a value, I can do that too. There, there is no Ravi in that existing one. I added Ravi here, right? Now it need not be an integer. It, it can as well be. Let us say I, I, I can just. Uh, so. It added J as an index, right? Now instead of uh, me uh, taking the default indexes, if I want to add an yeah. index, yes. Is it like immutable? Uh, this one, sir, or a mutable? Mutable, mutable, mutable. Okay. Now let us say if I want to give indexes as. Okay. Now I added this index A B C D. So when I added index A, B, C, D, now, so instead of the default index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, now I have A, B, C, D as an index, right? Now, if I want to access it, it's of A equal to John. Does this remind you of dictionaries from yesterday? Right? Great. So, um, so these are series. Now, technically, now that you had seen a series which has uh, one column, um, you can your data frame is nothing but a, 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 a table with multiple columns. So technically, each column, if you're looking at it, a series, your data frame is a combination of series, right? So uh, your um, uh, your series is like you're building a column, and your data frame is like your bunch of columns together make a data frame. Okay. Now, when you are accessing your uh, series, right? There are a few ways. Let us say if I say A, great. So let me first display this. Okay. Now, if I want to access multiple columns, okay. If I want to access multiple columns, I need to give those column names as a list, like this. Okay. So if I just access one column, then I can just uh, uh, give a, or I can as well use slicing. Give me everything after P. Okay. These are few ways you can access your data in a series. Some of these. Would be relevant once we get into the data frames also, but I just wanted to show you uh, how a series works. 
So in a series, you're giving your data as a list and you can give indexes. If you don't give indexes, by default, it starts uh, uses integer 0, 1 to n as indexes, right? And then you can access the data using your index and then you can assign values using index. You can change values also. The same way we assign, we added a value, I can as well change a value. Let us say if I want to change, right? If I, it is John now, if I want to change it to Terry, I can as well change it, okay? So this is like a dictionary, more or less, okay? Now, this is one step. Now let us take it to next level where we will create a data frame, okay? So usually df, you see df, that's a data frame typically, right? So pd dot data frame, data equal to x, right? And then index equal to, let us say I want to four and column. I want to give, uh, by default, I won't, I won't give index and columns. Let me just uh, do by default and then I'll add index and columns, right? So I'm creating a data frame. So there you go, this is a, this is a data frame. So as you can see here, by default, it just uses zero to n uh, uh, indexes for uh, uh, row indexes as well as column indexes, right? So instead of this, if I want to create a data frame with my own indexes, if I'm going too fast or is it okay? Okay. Okay, sir. Good, good. Hopefully, I'm not Sorry, putting all Hopefully, I'm not putting all you all to sleep. Um, so B, C, D, right? Now, I have uh, uh, four rows and five columns, right? So E, okay? I want to use my own uh, row indexes as well as column indexes. So I'm saying, hey, these are my column names, these are my row numbers, and I'm saying data is in X, okay? So there you go. So if I look at df now, so that's my df. Okay. Now you can access df. So there is a tricky part here, I'll tell you. Okay. So when you're accessing uh, your data frame, by uh, 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 just, just uh, as uh, uh, rows, you can always just select first row or second row or something. You can just uh, use slicing. If you're not using slicing, it use these kind of errors and I'll tell you what you should do. Slicing works, okay? Now let us say I want to access a specific uh, uh, range of the way you did NumPy slicing, right? There's something called ILOC. ILOC for uh, index location. Okay, there you go. So in this case, your entire uh, DF is like a two byte, uh, like a matrix for you, where you can you can apply integer indexes and you can access it using ILOC. Sir, okay. I have a question. Mm. Yes. Uh, sir, can we uh, can we give uh, the uh, index A B C D column wise? Yes. 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 I'll come to that. So, okay. Right. Right. Got a question. Mm, no, sir. Here in left side, one, two, three, four. I want to put here uh, A, B, C, D like this. You can. You can. You can do whatever you want. Yes, that works. You can give anything. Index. Uh, you you can give uh, one, two, three, A, B, C, D. Uh, index can be anything. To your question here, you can you can give anything. This is your question, right? There you go. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. So then, if you if you're just accessing rows, you can do it this way, and uh, the simple slicing you can use ILOC. Okay. And uh, again, index. If you want to access your uh, data frame as if it's like a NumPy two-dimensional array, you can use ILOC for that kind of an indexing, right? Now, if I want to access multiple columns, then I need to use there you go. 
Okay. Single column, you can just give like this. By the way, it returns a series. If you do like this, it returns a series. Right. So when you give multiple columns, you need to give it as a list. Then this this returns a um, data frame. So I'll show you the difference. See, this is a data frame. Right. If I do a type of this. Let's say series. If I'm accessing one column, it returns a series. If I'm accessing multiple columns, it's a data frame. Right? And all this, these functions, anytime, anytime, let now let us say if I want to look at this and I want to know what functions are supported on this, you can just simply do DIR on this. Any any Python data type, any Python object, you can just do a DIR to see what functions it supports. These are all the different functions that a data frame, a series supports. Even for that matter, everything in Python, let us say if I want to choose DIR of 10, 10 is an integer, right? So these are all the different functions supported by 10, which is an integer. I can just use this DIR on anything in Python to see what functions and attributes are supported. Okay? So uh, in, in our case, we, we are looking at a uh, data frame and a series. Good so far? Okay, now let us take it a step further. Okay, now uh, we we accessed uh, a data frame, accessed a couple of columns or a single column, and it made it return a series. Right, great. Now let us take it a step further. So these are the two. Now there is something called I told you right, lock and I lock. Right. So lock is to access the um, access your data frame using indexes. So in this case, now let us say I want to access X and Y rows, right? And I want to access A and B columns. Sorry guys, uh, it's a square brackets instead of uh, anyway, right? So uh, log is to access your data frame using indexes. ILOG is to access your data frame using uh, slicing and uh, numeric indexes like your uh, NumPy array, right? So I'll put lock and ILOG one next to other so that you can see the difference. There you go. Okay, so these are two common ways that you will access. Now, without anything, you can always access the columns like this. You don't need a lock or a lock. Like if I just want to access a certain column, I can always do this. Good so far? Sir, can I, add, uh, can I join or multiply two different data frames? Say it again. Can I multiply two different data frames, add or multiply? You have NumPy has that. Cross join, all kinds of matrix uh, operations are available in NumPy. But uh, your data frames allow you to join the data frames on certain join condition, like you, the way you join your tables. OK? OK, sir. Great. So, uh, so this is the example where we are accessing it with lock, I lock, and we access with directly using uh, your, uh, what is it, um, the indexes, right? Now, let us take it a step further, right? So, So if you see here, obviously you are uh, looking at uh, df dot a. The, the last row is even. Everything else is odd. Correct. Right? The z is the one that is true. Now, if I uh, want to access very similar to the way we access data in a uh, rows where we apply the where condition, I can simply say 
where df of a percentage to equal to zero and pass that as a parameter to df and returns that the row z. You see here, the z is true here. Okay, so that same thing is written uh, when, when you are uh, giving that as an input. So basically, it's a true false. It, it, it's just array. I can I can as well give a list of uh, arrays and it would it would just work the same way. Right, so that's how you selectively pull whatever data you need out of a, um, a data frame. Any questions on this? Explain sir. Sir, go ahead. What's your question? No, sir. Is zero. Repeat your question. Your voice is not clear. So this one. Yeah, 174. This is I'm applying a condition. The way you apply a where clause in your SQL. Here I'm saying, get me the row where the value of a is a, a factor of two. In this case, 24 is the only even number here, right? So here I am saying, uh, get me that row where a value is a factor of two. Okay. Okay. So you, if when you apply this directly, it returns a true/false for each row. So whichever row it returns true, uh, you you can get that entire row using this expression. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sir, I have one one question. Uh -huh. Sir, I have one question. Okay. Sir, I couldn't get the uh, significance of NumPy and uh, uh, the series, sir. Pandas and NumPy. What do you mean by couldn't get the significance? Sir, in what cases uh, will go for NumPy? In uh, uh, what other cases will go for this Pandas? Sir? It's so, confusing. Okay. Whenever you need to deal with something like a matrix, in uh, th that is NumPy, right? Under the hood, any uh, machine learning or any artificial intelligence, anything that you like TensorFlow or PyTorch or anything that you look at, under the hood, it is using uh, NumPy as the main storage data type for anything that you're storing, right? It's like uh, it is an optimized, uh, versatile way of handling arrays. That's NumPy. It's a multi-dimensional array. That's NumPy, okay? When it comes to pandas, it's more for data science, where uh, you are trying to massage the data and uh, look at the data as if it's like Excel sheets or tables. That's where you use pandas. Where you want to look at something as a multi-dimensional array, that is NumPy. Where you want to look at the data as a table, that is pandas. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Very simple, right? So very rarely you'll run into pandas in uh, uh, AI, right? Uh, because that's where the mostly it's images and other things where it's uh, mostly NumPy. Does that interest your question? Yeah, yeah. Good. Thank you. So now let us say if I want to add a new column, right? So here it has uh, up to E. Now I want to add F, right? So I simply give values. Okay, so I added the column F, right? And now the, the, the beauty is, now let us say, I want to add a new column, uh, E plus F equal to D, uh, DF of E. DF of F. I added this. This is like Excel. That's what I was telling you. Your pandas data frame is like Excel. This is what you typically do when you have expressions in Excel, right? So that's what you're doing here too. You can have any kind of expressions. I can create new columns using existing columns, and I can do all kinds of interesting, crazy stuff. Okay. Now, Excuse me, sir. Yeah, go ahead. 
So can we add rows like this? Yes, yes. We will. I'll I'll show you that. Just give me a second. So before uh, I'm trying to look at an example for you where I'm adding the rows. Just a second. Yeah, there you go. So uh, let us say if I'm trying to add a row. Okay. So let me take a simple example because it has so many columns. So let me make a new df1 equal to df of a Okay. I'll give a dictionary. In dictionary, I'll give a colon. So this has, so if you look at the syntax of a pen, um, I'll, I'll show you what uh, the significance is, but there is something called ignore index. Okay? This ignore index, we need to give a value, I'll tell you why. So do you see here, df1.append, we added uh, this column. Now, that ignore index, the reason for this is, if you don't give ignore index equal to true, it expects you to give value for this index. And that is possible only when you have, when you're appending with a, uh, with a series. So when you're just adding with a dictionary, you'll simply say ignore index equal to true, so that it creates its own index. So in this case, it just added the four as a new index. Okay. So if I want to add uh, this as a So, uh, when you are trying to, uh, let us say you want to give your own name to this index, then you need to add a row using the series. Okay. So, I want to give both versions. So, this is where you are adding a row using just the dictionary, right? In this, you are using uh, adding a row using a series where you are um, uh, giving an index. Okay, okay these are two syntaxes. Now, uh, by the way, none of it will add uh, the, the row to the, uh, uh, what you call, uh, Wrote to the table, you would have to um, say in place equal to true. Okay, I'll show you that. If, let us say, if I then don't say in place equal to true, I just keep running a pen how many ever times, it just keeps adding it, but it, it doesn't update the BF1. So if you look at BF1, it will always be the same old thing, right? So there are two ways to make it an update. So either I can say df1 equal to, this is one way to do it. Okay? Then your df1 will have it. Or the other way is, let us say if I want to add 120, right? So every operation on a data frame, there is something called in place equal to true, okay? When you do in place equal to true, 
okay. there is no in place on this okay so i'll show you other operations where there is a in place but a bunch of other uh, operations allow you to say in place equal to two if not it, it won't update the data frame right so in this case i'm updating the data frame and adding the product okay this is the thing so uh, this is how you add uh, rows and uh, the previous one that's how you add the columns okay uh, any questions on this sir yes yeah uh, ignore index and then in place these are all the what are called functions which you can find uh, in pandas no no ignore index these are all the parameters to this function right this append function has this ignore index yeah. as a parameter optional parameter yeah but Every, you you know because you have experience but as a new person how i can come to know where i can find there you go if you say alt yeah. that's a shift tab right shift tab if you press shift okay. tab it shows a complete any time i don't remember all of it also if you see yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah. i am missing some of those arguments also right every day you don't okay. use all these functions right so there is yeah. no way uh, unless someone is a super computer with infinite memory no one can remember all this so you would yes. have to just whenever it gives an error you just look at the help rather than you going to google and searching for help you can say shift tab in jupyter notebook and it will open the uh, help for you okay right and this help is very well very very exhaustive right so okay sir okay, okay okay good now there are few things uh, with uh, uh, pandas so with a data frame uh, there are some things like df dot size or df dot shape right this is a 4 by 7 array right df dot describe df dot describe will give you the uh, for all the numeric columns again varchar columns it won't but for all the numeric columns it gives you the the number of values which is number of records again let us say if you have uh, null values no, uh, not a number or null values uh, undefined then uh, this count uh, will represent that right mean median standard deviation percentiles 25 50 75 percentile max so you get all these stats this is more or less like your exploratory data analysis kind of a thing again we'll do visual exploratory data analysis uh, later but this is like pandas out of the box gives you some level of exploratory data analysis information of what that column has how many values it has mean median mode percentiles everything right so uh, describe and similarly the info df.info will give you the data types right what is the data type of each of the columns okay and df.index will give you the the index for that table okay now uh, before we take a break i want to quickly touch on some interesting concept like the, the, every data frame by default it has an index if you don't give anything it will have 0 1 2 3 4 as index index is the is the name that it gives to every row okay so now if i say df dot reset index Now, if you look at df, it it removed that index and it made it a column. You see here the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It has now 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 as an index, and the index that we had now became a column. Okay. Now I can again set let us I want to make e as an index. Okay. Again, if I don't say in place equal to true, it, it doesn't change the data frame. Right now, I made E as an index. Okay, sorry. There you go. Right. So now E is the index. You see, E is gone from here. Earlier, E was here. Now E is gone from here. Right. Now, if I want to pull it out, then I can simply say, "Df dot reset index." Again, it will come out. Now I want to put back the original index. Then I can just uh, 
very good. I put back the original index. Okay, so index is something uh, whenever you are trying to join two data frames or uh, um, anytime you are uh, trying to uh, do grouping, any of these things, index uh, plays a key role. If you need to join two data frames, you first need to make the join column as an index. Then only the join can be done, right? So again, uh, the, the, it's huge. Your pandas, you can do a lot of different things like group bys. You can do a lot of different things. Uh, we'll we'll try to cover some of them when we are trying to uh, go through the exploratory data analysis after the break. But uh, that that's just a, a, a bird's eye view of uh, pandas. What it can do. Any questions? Hello. Uh, I think you can take a break, sir. You have been continuously talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely need a coffee. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> virtually, virtually, I'm offering you a coffee, so virtually also. You can <laughs> but uh, so, what, what, so far, what's the feedback? Is it okay? Can I go at the same speed and uh, same kind of uh, presentation? It's Is really it? good, sir. Okay, good. Good to know. It's really, really nice, sir. Yeah, good, good. Uh, all the participants, we can just uh, take a break and then be back by sharp 445. Yeah, I'll take a break too. I'll take a grab a coffee and I should be back in 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, 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 definitely, sir. Thank you. That is the beauty of your okay, sir. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> no thing on the presenter, I mean, the uh, organizer's side. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Thank you. For I'll coffee. be back in 15 minutes. But anyway, be, uh, be back by 445, sir. Okay. Sure, okay, then. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say hi to Michael. Michael? Michael? Gabriel, tell me Michael from Ethiopia. Are you there? I can see you, Michael, on your screen. Hello. Michael? Okay. So this is one student uh, who has uh, kept his uh, video on and then uh, bunked the class. Michael, are you there? Please unmute your voice. Unmute. Please unmute your uh, uh, voice, uh, Michael. Ma'am, he is, he is not having internet problem. But I am able to see his uh, this one, ma'am. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that is there. But I think he has unmuted unmute, himself. Anyway, uh, participants, I just wanted to inform you that uh, some people are continuously requesting for materials, code, and all. Okay, we have been posting them in emails as well as in WhatsApp group. Okay, but kindly bear with us if at all anyone of you have missed it. At the last session, after the last session, we are going to dump all this and then post all these materials in our. Uh, uh, respective websites that is Amra University and JNT UK where you can download it directly. Okay, so do not worry about the materials as it is every day we are sending all the materials to your emails, but still some people are not getting it. Do not worry, uh, we will be hosting it in our websites. Okay, so again we will meet at uh, 4 45. Okay.
Hi everyone, I'm back. In case if any of you have any questions, you can feel free to ask. I, I need to quickly wrap up something. I'll be working yeah, on that. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is regarding uh, list and tuple. What is the major difference between these two? Is it brackets or something else? A lot more, a lot more than that. So, Can you explain that? Sure, sure. Give me a second. I'll explain. So maybe when uh, we have the rest of the folks back, I'll, I'll explain. Just give, give everyone a few minutes. Because okay. it's, it's a fundamental thing of uh, Python. Hello. Yes, I'm here, ma'am. Uh, sir, as a beginner, what do you suggest you start uh, learning Python from? Uh, as a beginner, I would recommend you to go to W3 schools. W3 school, okay. W3 That's school has very beautiful, very simple, uh, uh, the, uh, along with uh, some examples. It teaches pretty well. Okay. Right? And tutorials point. Tutorialspoint.com also has uh, a lot of good uh, tutorials. So those two sites I would recommend uh, as a starting point. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sure. So can we get started? Hello. Is is everyone Hello. back? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, can we do all the things in R programming, sir? Mm, well, R and Python are two different beasts. R is primarily for uh, data science kind of a thing, right? Statistics and data science. Python is a lot more. Python, uh, I mean, in terms of scalability and everything, uh, so Python has uh, uh, like web servers like Flask and Django and your uh, even uh, PyTorch and all these other things that you have, uh, with, with, which are available for Python, uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and all these other things, right? When it comes to statistics and data science, yes, R is as capable as Python, but Python has a lot bigger user base and support and uh, very versatile set of open source libraries that are available to you. OK, OK. OK. Now, uh, uh, someone was asking a question about a tuple versus list, right? So uh, tuple is read-only. You cannot update a tuple, whereas list you can update. OK, that's one thing. And uh, two, um, so it's immutable versus mutable, right? That, that, that's the main difference, right? Now, where you use tuple versus list, so let us say when you are uh, trying to um uh, let us say you are you are sending uh, parameters right then you you don't want uh, you are uh, receiving uh, uh, application to make changes then you send it as a tuple so that they cannot update the list because being updated the new uh, list being an immutable data structure i send a list as a parameter to a function then that function changes that list that change will be even seen in my uh, version of the list Right. Whereas when you send as a tuple, as tuple is uh, immutable, that change uh, no one can change it. Did I answer your question? Uh, yes, sir. But I gone through somewhere both mutable. That's why I was unable to find no, out. No, no, no. Tuple is immutable. Tuple is immutable. 
working. Unless you have a tuple element as a list, then tuple's element, uh, which is a list, is mutable. But tuple itself is immutable. Let us say if your tuple has four elements, you cannot change that four to five or make it three. Sir, uh, what is the second site, sir? You are telling tutorials.com and the tutorials second point. Tutorials? Uh, W3 schools. Tutorials point. Tutorials point. And the yeah. second one, sir? W3 schools. W3 scores. Schools. Schools. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, sir. Sure. Sir, yes. Are there any command which can list all the libraries available in Python? It, there are thousands. You can go to go to pyp.org. That pyp.org has a complete listing of all the. When you use pip, technically it goes to pyp. So pyp.org is a place. Pyp.org. Correct. So typically, when you are searching for something, you you will typically go to PyP. Okay. Let me know when we can get started. If everyone is uh, online, I can get started. Sir, start your session. Start the session. Sir, yes, Ravi Garu, I think I thought you have already started. Start, sir. Don't wait for anyone. There are already 180 participants. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, then. Perfect. Yeah, great. So, so far, uh, whatever we covered, it is, um, it's like, um, the the core though the core python am kudu ozu la pro asam ko guys can you please mute yourself okay so uh, the core python that we are uh, uh, familiar with whatever you went through yesterday so that, that that's like uh, the main functionality but when it comes to anything beyond uh, basic data massaging and DevOps kind of uh, simple automation and kind of stuff, you definitely would need Pandas and NumPy, right? So Pandas and NumPy should become second nature where most of the common things that you would have to do to manipulate or access um, NumPy arrays and uh, Pandas data frames and series, all that should become second nature once you are getting into data science, uh, ML and DI, right? Now, once we cross uh, the pandas and uh, uh, numpy once we get into this territory of data visualization and there it's more of a concept that you need to know there are a good number of examples let us say if i want to know how to build a bar chart with matplotlib you don't have to remember the syntax you just google and you'll find the syntax right so but whereas when it comes to pandas and numpy it's more of a logic you 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 google you find the syntax but you need to know uh, uh, what you try to do and what uh, logic you are trying to build. Once you are clear, you will find the help on NumPy and Pandas also. So whereas uh, when it comes to data visualization, so you will find ample uh, examples online uh, for uh, uh, syntaxes, right? Now, for Python, there are two main data visualization libraries. One is Seaborn, other is Matplotlib. So we look at examples. So I have some examples ready here for you. So, sir, please, yes. sir, uh, no, sir, uh, sir, uh, sir, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm yet to share my Do you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. 
Good, good, good. Okay. So here, uh, just to because there, there are too many parameters uh, involved, and uh, these uh, uh, so that I can uh, focus more time on the the different options to each of these charts. I already put together some examples, and I'll share this entire um, uh, Jupyter notebook with you guys. Okay. Now, um, as is the case with uh, uh, the, the NumPy and uh, Pandas, you would have to install Matplotlib using uh, pip install. So this is what you will install. OK? And then, so let us, uh, let me take uh, one example at a time, and uh, I'll, I'll try to create a new notebook, and I'll uh, So you'll be installing these using pip install. And once you install, you should be able to access them. And uh, then, so here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, create a uh, uh, cre create a NumPy array, right? And uh, so here, I'm trying to create this. So these are all the different languages that I have in a tuple. Someone was earlier asking about a tuple, right? So here, objects is a tuple, OK? Now, uh, j just to answer uh, uh, the person's question, now let us say if I say objects of 1 equal to a, b, c, it will give an error, saying tuple object does not support uh, uh, item assignment, right? Similarly, if I am creating a list with a tuple, list of, right? And then if I try to update that list, update that list, okay, it will allow me. So now when I say list, see, it's ABC. OK? So someone was asking uh, during the break about uh, tuple versus list. So I thought, as I have a tuple here, I thought, why not just uh, you said no longer presenting. It says I'm no longer presenting. Do you guys see my screen? No, sir. You do? No, sir. Yes, someone sir. is uh, trying to ask. No, sir. No, sir. Trying to present. Not visible, sir. Someone is trying to share. OK. I'll try to share again. One stop it and again. Present. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. Let me know if you guys see my screen. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm just removing these things. Okay, but anyway, I have uh, these uh, uh, a tuple and a list, right? Uh, with the, with the performances in each of these papers, right? Okay. Now let me try to build uh, uh, a bar chart. So when you are trying to build a bar chart, I'll, I'll just first build it, then I'll go into the parameters. Okay. So this is the bar chart that I created. Okay. Very simple, right? So if you see here, there are a few parameters that I want you to pay close attention to. So if you see here, this is y positions, which is one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So which is uh, th these uh, locations where uh, uh, the uh, the the value should be plotted. The performance is the actual performance that you see this chart bars. Okay, that's the performance. Now let us say if I make the performance as uh, say 20 here. Okay, then the, I I plot it. See this 20. Okay, so now <clears throat> this y position is the locations on y the x axis. So maybe I should say x position so that it's easy for you. So let me say x position so that. So on x-axis, where you want it to be plotted, OK? So technically, I can, I can possibly, if I want them far apart, I can uh, give 1, 3. I can, I can give indexes far apart, OK? So here, I just exposition, I, I created it as a range of, uh, uh, of length. This is 1 to 6. So let me just print the values of each. You see here, x position. Is zero. It's a zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? So, and then you you have these uh, labels, which is objects, and then the performance. 
So I am passing each of these as parameters to this exposition, performance, and the width. So if you see the width, width is nothing but the, the width of the bar. So if I say width is 8, then it will be fat. Each bar will be wide. Okay. So I can just adjust the width. Right. Then the align. I can say center. Center versus edge. If you see here, these bars are aligned to the center of the uh, mark on the x-axis. If I say edge, then it aligns to the edge. Do you see here? It's after that. Okay, so then alpha, alpha is the uh, is the transparency. Now, if I say alpha equal to one, if you see here, it's somewhat mild. These colors are light green, light red, and light blue. When I say uh, alpha equal to one, they'll become dark. Okay, and these colors, colors are you can give full red, green, blue, or you can just give the abbreviation. Now, if I just give one color equal to R, all of them will come the same color. If I say equal to R, all of them will be red. Instead, if I want to, let us say, alternate them as R, B, it will be just R, B, R, B, R, B. Right? Or I can give a color to each of them separately using a full array. Whatever is the length of my data, I give so many colors, and it just gives color to each of them. Okay, so these parameters, I'm spending so much time here because these parameters will repeat. Align, alpha is the transparency, colors is colors, right? And um, alignment is with respect to the, the marks on the X or Y axis, right? So those are the common ones that you will see in other charts also, okay? So any question, and here, by the way, if you see here, Y label, usage. So I'm saying Y label is usage here, okay? And then the X label is programming languages here. And then the title. I can give title these things. What, what you want as a labels for X label, Y label, title. These things will be common no matter which chart you pull. These things, you, can, you if I just don't assign them anything, it, it won't show anything. OK? Any so question? Can't we, can't we give colors without mentioning their uh, like multiple colors, without mentioning colors, R, G, like that? What do you mean uh, without mentioning? Uh, here we are giving RRGGBB, uh, like we are mentioning number of uh, columns. Correct. But Correct. Without uh, without mentioning that, can we give different colors? I mean, you can build a list. You can build a list and you can give colors there, right? Okay. See, I can okay. put this entire thing. Let us say if I don't want to give it here. Right? So then I can uh, say C equal to this list. And I can simply say color equal to C. Right? If you want to programmatically assign, let us say if uh, someone is uh, below the pass mark or uh, below average, you want to put it in red, above average, you want to put it in green, then you can just programmatically build that color list and just view that as a parameter, that list as a parameter. No, sir. By default, it should assign. I think what does it mean by, I mean, he's By default, if you don't question. give any color, then it will uh, give blue. By default, the uh, default is blue. By default, it uh, just takes blue for all of them. Did I answer sir, your question? Sir, what yes, is sir. the purpose of the performance? Which one? No, no, performance is the actual values that you are plotting on the y-axis. So if you are looking at the performance, right, this is the values that you are plotting. OK, OK, OK. So you are saying the performance of Python is 10, ah, C++ is yes, 8. Yes, Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. so this Python and all these are on the labels on the yes, x-axis. Yes, yes, yes. The values that you are plotting is the performance. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Now we'll go one step further. So okay. So here um, I'll be doing a line chart. So for this line chart, so if you see here, uh, there are uh, this uh, x tick and y tick. So if I just don't, uh, uh, if I don't want any x axis or y axis, any uh, markings on x and y axis, I can simply say x tick blank list. If you just pass blank list to them, it will just uh, uh, make it empty. I mean, by default, it will give whatever numbers. 
instead of whatever it is giving let us say you want to give a value uh, then you you can uh, give your own values okay now here i'm saying uh, x stick uh, which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 as you see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 right and then y axis all the axis also i'm saying i want all the way up to 100 on my y axis but the actual data is uh, very little right so we with the data that we are getting is between 1 and 20 we are taking five random values and we are plotting that so that's the reason the actual data is only up to 20 but just because i said i want y axis till 100 it was showing till 100 right so this i mean if you don't want any uh, uh any uh, labelings on x or y axis if you just want it then you can use uh empty list for x tick and y tick if you just want default if you don't want to mess anything with it you just want it to display the default uh, x and y axis labels based upon the the values passed as input you just uh, don't say anything and it will just show the the default uh, uh, values on the x axis and y axis that's the uh, line line chart okay so again if you look at it the the functions the plt dot plot is for line chart then plt dot bar is for bar chart okay so if i don't say anything now let us say in this this example uh, you you don't have to really bother about all those different parameters if i just simply um, the way i i give the line chart i see I can, I can just simply give if yeah, this is my x axis and this is y axis boom you have it but those are additional parameters that you can tinker if you want okay this is a similarly for line chart i'm simply giving this is my x axis and this is my y axis okay so these are other options that you can tinker i just want to uh, familiarize yourself with those additional options but the simple plotting is so simple and um, uh, so easy with uh, matplotlib and python okay i don't want you to get uh, uh, worried about all these different parameters these are there for you to mess with but you don't have to really bother about them if you are doing something quick and dirty okay then let us go to there's so many different types of charts okay now similarly the same chart but here i am doing it in horizontal bar so if you see here instead of bar it's a bar h right again similarly the your i am giving hey what are all my axes of x axis and the, the values that need to be plotted and then uh, alignment so everything else is almost the same okay so sir yes in the above diagram y axis and then perform you uh -huh. you define y y underscore this one yes so y underscore correct, correct. Uh, position correct. then correct. it will take performance uh, as x axis automatically correct see basically when you are trying to say uh, bar, so you are only saying these are my uh, the main x axis so let me just give x axis it's somewhat confusing so if the whatever you saw previously where the axis was on x now it's on the y right and then yeah. i'm saying plot plot the performance so this is what you are trying to plot yeah okay and then rest of the parameters are the same mm -hmm. okay now we'll do something bit more interesting so these are just the simple charts now what if i want multiple bars nay no, my doubt is, is that we uh, are defining only one axis not to in the both the cases so it is not required to define both the x and y right so in the both the no, case you define no no look at it this way when will you use a bar chart when, when there is a bar chart no when when you are having uh, certain things like in this case we are taking languages and the performance programming languages and performance right mm -hmm. you are trying to compare let us say i'm trying to do a histogram or anything like that wherein i have a label uh, the segmented labels and the values for those segments correct so there yes, i am giving the the uh, the segment uh, values uh, for uh, if you see here the here 
So where I'm giving uh, the uh, the locations on the x-axis where I want to plot, and the actual values that I want to plot, and the actual labels for those uh, x-axis, I'm giving it in the y-axis. Okay. Sir, someone right. is presenting the screen, sir. Can you? Yeah, someone just took away my presentation. Yeah, your screen is not visible. Just now, yeah. Looks like someone doesn't like me today. Uh, request to admin, please pin the program up, sir. Yes, do you see my screen? Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay, good. So, Hello, uh, sir. Uh, one minute, please. One minute. Uh, in the participants, Srihari, P. Srihari and Jyoti, please uh, switch off your cameras. And I request all the other participants also to mute themselves. If at all you have a question only, you please unmute yourself. This is the third time or fourth time we are repeating this. Please do uh, cooperate. Okay, sir. Continue. Okay, so, ma'am. To your earlier question, if you see here, so this is the chart where I'm saying uh, x positions 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is where I want charts, and this performance is what I want to plot. But here, instead of the actual programming languages, you see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I want to put the labels here, I'm saying plot.ytx. So there, I'm giving the, the position and the object. So if you see here, Bar, uh, sorry. Yeah, there you go. So the X sticks, when I give X sticks, so now it has the, the languages, right? So by default, if I just don't give anything, it just gives 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 as numbers. But if I want to put actual labels for each of those, what they mean, I can, I can give those names. So that's how you just keep adding it's it's like a canvas on which you are just drawing you're adding labels you're adding titles and you're uh, telling what capacity what colors you want so we, everything is in your control okay now let us look at this example where now let us say if i want to draw two bar charts so see this so where i, I took the same data but technically you can have different data too so in this case, what I'm saying is, hey, take uh, the, the Y position. So where, where it starts, right? So here in this case, let me just do X. Actually, it's on X axis. So let me just do X position just so that it's easy for you guys. So X position, I'm saying, so by default, it starts at 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So here I'm saying minus 0 0.3. So the first bar starts 0 0.3 before the tick. And the next bar starts just right at the tick, this zero, right? Now let us say if I move it to five, you'll see a small gap between them because I started the first one farther left. Okay, so I gave the width as 0.3, and uh, the first bar to just start at uh, 0.3 before again, whatever is the scale, one to n. On that scale, it's 0 0.3. Okay, 0 0.3 of that, and then I said width of the bar is 0 0.3. Align is edge. Okay, so and then color. This is the color. So I can give any color here. So that way I can plot multiple bars with different uh, uh, data on the same bar chart. Let us say I'll, I'll just uh, did you did you guys go through list comprehension yesterday? Yes, sir. Okay. So just for the sake of it, I'm adding 10 to each element, just so that those two charts don't look alike, right? So if you see here, uh, so I'm, I'm just added 10, uh, just so that those two look different, right? So uh, so this is two different data sets now, technically. 
That's how you can plot multiple bar charts on the same canvas. Okay. Now let us look at one other chart. Sir, can I display only bar charts or else pie charts also? You can. You can. I have an example for that too. Okay. So one of the very common uh, scenarios, especially in uh, machine learning and uh, data science kind of an environment, is let us say if I'm trying to apply various algorithms and trying to see how well my predictions uh, uh, are compared to expected values uh, in terms of percentages and comparing different algorithms, where you want to uh, plot multiple uh, metrics in, uh, in the same chart, right? So you can achieve something like that using subplot. So if you see here, I'm saying uh, each figure, that is, I'm saying the fixed size. Fixed size is each box. So I can, if I reduce the fixed size, each of these boxes would be smaller, OK? So each fixed size is this. And then I'm saying, hey, I want, a, I want to do a subplot in the two by two plot. In the two by two plot, in the first plot, I want to plot this. In the second plot, I want to plot this. So you just uh, and uh, uh, define the the subplot, and then whatever plot you give, that comes in that subplot. Then you give whatever title you want. Then you are saying, if you see here, if I look at the example for this function, right? So it has uh, multiple parameters. The first is the total size, the the number of rows, number of columns, and the index, right? So in our case, I'm saying two by two rows. In that, I want to uh, plot this in the first uh, index. This I want to plot in second index. This I want to plot in the third index. This I want to plot in the fourth index, right? So that's how I took random data. But technically, I have four different plots. Each, this is the scatter plot. This is a line uh, line graph. So I'm, I'm using four different charts on four different things. Now, let us say if I want to add a third row, right? So I want to make it three rows and two columns, right? So here, I just simply add five, six, and uh, let us say I want to make one of them as a scatter. Didn't like something. What it didn't like? So you have to change all the values to three, sir. Yeah, yeah, three yeah. yeah, yeah, right. Good point. You can um, you can put as many number of plots you want. Okay, and if let us say if I want to change this to ten by ten, you see it's kind of uh, horizontal, right? If I do ten by ten, each of them will be more like a square. Very good. See, I said ten by ten instead of twenty by ten. So each is kind of a square, right? So that's this is very um, uh, versatile, and you can do a lot of interesting things with uh, plotting. Okay. And someone was asking about a pie chart. And by the way, so if you want uh, multiple things on the same chart, you you can as well do that. So if you see here, I have uh, a line chart, um, a scatter plot, and a bar chart. All of them on the uh, same canvas, right? Now, uh, the the main thing here is that whenever you are doing plot, 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 all of it is drawing on the same canvas. Once you display it, the canvas is reset. Next time you are trying to draw, you you it will take a plain empty canvas. Until you display, 
that ca that canvas is retained and it keeps drawing on the same canvas once you display it resets the canvas next time when you try to draw it uh, when you it, it takes the blank canvas again so that's the trick that's the reason where you don't see anywhere in here where i say reset the canvas so here i use subplots and then i used uh, uh, a new uh, uh, plot with a, a bar and a line and a scatter all of them just work seamlessly because every time it displays it just resets the canvas hello sir yes yeah line number 42 put uh -huh. can you show that yeah uh, can you show that? yeah here at most of the cases whenever what kind of graph we want we mention like plot dot bar right. and plot scatter right. plot dot like right. but i saw somewhere this plot dot p uh, plot this when we have to use this one plot dot plot because i saw somewhere else also here plot dot plot is right yes. here right yeah last one right it's like a line chart okay when we draw in line charts then we have to go for the right. plot dot plot right. yes and sometimes i think in one of the other libraries even you simply say plot and you can say the chart type also you can say bar or uh, uh, or uh, scatter with a parameter i i think in seaborn or one of the other libraries you simply say plot but you tell the type of uh, chart as a parameter did i answer your question Yes, sir. I got. Okay. I got. Thank you. Good. 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 Okay, guys. So here the real fun starts. So do you remember, like we talked a lot about pandas and data frames, right? So here I have uh, an example where we are taking pandas and then we are plotting data from pandas. Pandas inbuilt uh, integrates with Matplotlib. You don't have to really uh, write any special code. Whatever data you have in pandas. You, with a single line of code, you should be able to visualize any of the data in pandas. We'll see some examples here. So if you see here, uh, so I'm just importing pandas and I'm importing uh, matplotlib, right? And then I have this uh, data frame, which I'm building with data, where I'm saying task type, it's more like task ongoing or completed, and then I have the number of tasks, right? And then I built a uh, data frame with this, right? And then, uh, then someone was asking about the pie chart, right? So you simply say pie, and then why I'm saying is uh, y is task. So I'm saying just uh, build the pie with a with a task. Fix size, fix size is five comma five, which is let us take to the other one, and uh, we'll play with it there. So here, the fix size defines how big your chart will be. Let us say if I make it uh, 10 comma 10, it will be huge, big. Okay. So uh, in our case, we did 5 comma 5. Uh, then if you do, if you remove this auto PCT, it won't put those. Do you see these percentages here? Those would be gone. It will just print the graph without the percentages. So once you uh, use that option auto PCT, it shows those percentages, and then here you are giving the the format of it. Okay. Now the starting, if you don't give starting, it doesn't start at the the 90 degrees. So it just started somewhere randomly here. It doesn't start at the uh, 90 degrees or the very top, right? So when you give the uh, the values. Yes, uh, So, start it. Start angle equal to 90. Start angle equal to 90. There Continuous, sir. Single. Start angle. Continuous. Single. Yes, single. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. So start angle equal to. Right. 
to the 90. Okay, so that's a pie chart. Then the with this pandas integration, you can do a lot of interesting tricks. We'll we'll look at examples. Okay, so we are taking a a data frame uh, with uh, uh, different data. We use this guy for a lot of different examples. Okay, so in here. Uh, what we are doing is we, we have a data, a country, uh, the per capita income and the income per capita, GDP per capita and income per capita, right? So in this, what I'm saying is uh, dot plot, where I'm saying take X as a country and Y as the GDP per capita and income per capita and say kind equal to bar. So when you simply say kind equal to bar, it just does a bar chart. The first one has two different metrics, so it, it did a, um, a multi bar. The second one only has income per capita, it is that. You, instead of bar, if I simply say line, boom, it just does a line chart. So that's the beauty. So this is how simple it is for us to use pandas to store the data, uh, which is integrated with matplotlib. Now you may ask, why do I need to put this from? If you don't do this, uh, uh, import PLT, it will not uh, display the, uh, the plot. It will be building it in the background, but for you to display, you just need to import. Once you import, it just displays it. Okay, so that is how versatile the combination of uh, pandas and matplotlib is. Okay, so that's one example. Again, the next example, it's the same lines that we did. So similarly, you can do uh, a scatter, or oh, this is the one. You see here, like df.plot, you simply say df.plot, and then the type equal to scatter. Earlier, we did the type equal to bar, type equal to line, right? So here, you can simply say type equal to scatter. Okay, all of these are same plot, df.plot, df.plot. You're simply telling what kind of a chart you want. Sir? Uh, yes. The background is white in the graph, sir. If I want to give in a graph sheet format, I think there is an option for grid. Uh, there is an option for grid. You can enable the grid. So if I look at this plot, I want instead of white, I want a square box. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is an option. I uh, let me see if we can quickly find it. If not, you just Google it. You'll find it. So there is just an df dot grid uh, in bracket true sir no sir i think it is working on uh, uh, matplotlib sir plt dot grid it, it, it will work sir No, 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 no. So, yeah, there, there should be some option. Let's not waste time on that. But uh, there should be one simple option with which you should be able to enable. Okay. So, or I'll I'll send the exact syntax you need to use uh, after the call. But there, there should be something in one of those parameters. Okay, sir. Then, uh, so we did the the regular plate plot, right? Now let us do one more example. In this, we have a bit more complex uh, uh, data set. Okay. So this is a bit more complex data set. And we'll do some more interesting charts on this data. Okay. So in this case, uh, OK. So typically, yeah. So if I am uh, trying to plot both of them on the same chart, because whenever you say plot, it tries to draw it on a different canvas, right? Here I draw both the plot commands to draw on the same canvas. We could accomplish the same thing using uh, the uh, the previous example here. You you give two uh, metrics as a uh, parameter, as a list parameter, the y. Right? You could accomplish it the same way, but here, just to show the uh, the syntax and how you can do it across multiple uh, plot commands. So this is an example where I'm saying it's a plt.gca, right? So, and then 
that uh, GCA meaning, I'll be sending you this guys, GCA is the get current access. That's the meaning of the GCA, okay? So you're taking the current axis and then I'm saying on the same axis, I want to draw these two line charts, right? So that's how you get the, uh, the current GCA, current uh, canvas, and then you draw on that same canvas using this AX parameter, where uh, you're giving this uh, current uh, canvas as a parameter to the plot command. Okay, now, so, yeah, this is another interesting uh, thing. So, group by. So this is uh, again. There's a bit of uh, uh, bit of uh, pandas to it. Let us uh, break down the pandas part with the uh, uh, pandas part and the matplotlib part. Okay. So if I'm seeing here, I'm saying group by state. If I'm doing a group by on the state on that uh, pandas data frame. So this is the data frame. On this data frame, I'm doing a group by on the state, which does the counts. I'm saying count. I can do sum also. So count or sum, right? Now these are all the counts when I do the group by on the state. So on that, I'm saying I want to take the name, right? So here, see, if I'm just taking the name, okay? So if I just take the name, that's the data, right? Name is 323. And on that name, I'm saying I want to just plot the bar chart for that data. So so initial part is all pandas. The part that kicks in, the matplotlib part, is just this last part. So technically, I can do this on any of the columns. I, I don't, uh, without grouping, with grouping, I can just pick any column, any metric column on the uh, data frame. I can simply say dot plot bar, boom, it just does it. Okay, and in this case, it takes the index, that's the key. Index will become the names of the bars. Okay, and the value that you are selecting will become the bars. Now, like for example, uh, if we are looking at, uh, so, number of children. Let us, okay, let us take an example. Uh, Okay. Now, sir, can you sir, can you reverse this matrix and then do that one? What do you mean by reverse? Of this? No, you cannot. So right? names should be. No, 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 no. Huh? Because that you can transpose, then it, it it won't right because uh, you are taking the uh, your rows. Row, rows are expected to be uh, in vertical. Columns are yeah. uh, on the top, so you cannot transpose and then uh, do the same thing. First of all, <laughs> the data frame itself won't work. But the nature of data frame okay. is more like Excel document, right? Okay. So, but what we can do is, uh, if I'm doing set index as a name, I'm setting the name as an index, right? Then, um, then I take uh, the uh, the number of pets as the value, and then dot plot dot bar. It, it, the original, I did not change anything. I just took the original, uh, I left the original thing intact. I simply said, set the index as name. Uh, if I did in place, then it would have updated the data frame. In this case, I did not update the data frame. I simply said, take a copy, set the index, only bring the number of pets column, and then put it in a bar chart. As simple as that. Just to show you that example. Okay, you can do with group by. I mean, the group by we did a count, and uh, then on those counts we did a, a plotting. But technically, you can just take any data frame. The idea is I'm taking a data frame, and I whatever I want to put it on x-axis, I make it an index, and whatever metric I want to chart, I select that with like, in the square brackets, and then just simply say plot. Boom! It just does it. Okay, great. Okay, so this is an interesting one. So where uh, gender, I'm putting it as a uh, stack chart. Okay, now this stacking part again, until here, it is all 
uh, our favorite uh, pandas so let us uh, uh, let us go one step at a time see this is the size so once you do a group by state and gender so this becomes the index this first part this is all index index of the data frame whatever you do a group by on that becomes index now only thing i am saying is unstack unstack means dot unstack becomes that uh, first level the last item becomes a column now right now once you make it a column then you you just uh, simply plot it i'm saying dot plot bar then stack equal to true if i don't say stack equal to true if i don't say stack equal to true it will do side by side if i say stack equal to true the same thing will be one top of the other so you just have to piece it apart and then put it back together to understand how it's working so what this is showing me uh, for each of the states at the bottom right the states are at the bottom for each of the states it is showing the male female breakdown as a stacked bar chart okay so the, the the these are some additional things in uh, pandas that's why i was telling you i i covered the basic fundamentals there but there are more complex things that you can do with pandas that we are covering as part of this visualization and when we go into exploratory data analysis we'll see some more okay that's the power of pandas okay now let us do something more again here it is same i, I want to uh, waste time on this here i am taking gender and state right male female and in which state how uh, male female are spread across different uh, states right again size then uh, unstack and then plot the exact same thing that we are taking a different group by right then here histogram so histogram is another interesting so here rather than we breaking our heads and trying to do histogram the hard way excuse uh, me sir yes uh, uh, can you please repeat the above one uh, where is the state i am unable to see the state a uh, gender is okay here state yeah is, here it's the colors green orange and blue is the states oh, okay, okay okay so very similar here do you remember like we did the m and f right so yeah. it takes the last one when you do unstack it takes the last one and makes it columns and then those columns will become stack let us look at the example here we'll take this data out yeah thank you okay so now we do this part and up to unstack see do you see this it becomes states came out okay now if you remove this state uh the if you don't do unstack it will be in the index by default when you do group by whatever you select as a group by will become the index of the data frame okay so now you unstack then it becomes columns and then on top of that you are just simply plotting it and then in plotting also you are saying i want it to be stacked instead of side by side if i don't say stack equal to true it becomes side by side three bars in each group yeah Yes, sir. Can we directly import SQL table to Panda? Yes, Panda has some such options. But why do you? I mean, you want to just bring it for charting purposes, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Technically, your databases are a lot more versatile with respect to data massaging. But if you want to bring it into Panda for charting, yes, it does allow. Okay. Thank you. Right. So. now let us move on to the next one i think we are done here um, yeah the histogram right here i am doing uh, taking age and then for a uh, plotting i am saying histogram and here i am taking bins 20 each uh, uh, range of 20 is one bin and then uh, so i am just defining the width how wide i want uh, the uh, each of this bars to be right 
So the, this simplifies the histogram because histogram, if not, you need to bucket the data and then do a bar with it. Okay. So this it gives you a glimpse of uh, the different things that you can do with pandas, without pandas, using matplotlib. Okay. We'll do more visualization as part of exploratory data analysis. Any any questions on this part so far? Okay, good. Tighten your seat belts. We'll be going into the next phase, which will be even more exciting. So let us look at exploratory data analysis. Okay. Now, um, what is exploratory data analysis? Let us let us first focus on that. Okay. So when uh, I'll, I'll be taking our uh, best uh, example, the, the one that we start with every machine learning and data science uh, journey, which is uh, Iris data set, right? So in Iris data set, uh, if you are, uh, I'm sure all of you must have run into Iris data set in some or other form in one or the other place, right? Or do I have to tell what Iris data set is? Looks like no. Okay. So, yes, sir, I, we heard, we heard. right, right. But, but um, it looks like there are folks who did not, but let me briefly introduce. So Iris data set is a very simple, I think 200 records or something, 150 records or something, where there are three types of levels. Those three types of levels, they gathered the sepal length and petal length, sepal width and petal width. Those are the four metrics that they have. And there are three types of levels. So they are trying to build a machine learning model. Anytime you're doing any machine learning, you start with Iris data set, right? So where you're trying to train your model on sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width, uh, to identify the flowers. So if I give a new sepa, new record with uh, a new sepal and sepal width, petal and petal width, I need to identify which of these three types of flowers it is, right? So in this example, I'll, I'll, I'll come to it later, but I, I just to show you. So the data that you see in blue, orange, and green are those three different types of flowers. And each of these metrics, sepal and sepal width, petal and petal width, are the four attributes that we have as part of that input data, which we are using to train our models or analyze that data, right? Now, uh, exploratory data analysis is where, first of all, there are multiple things that we are trying to do. One is we are trying to understand how good our data is, right? That is, let us say there may be some data points where uh, you, are, you may have blank values, or let us say you have three flavors there. What if one of those flavors uh, is coming from a data set where one of the metrics is always blank. So it's no good, right? So these kind of scenarios, uh, or maybe the data is coming from different sources where one source has data in inches and other source has data in centimeters, right? Uh, so, or you have, may have blank values, or uh, some data is totally missing uh, from one of the sources. So all these are different uh, scenarios that you need to identify beforehand with the data analysis, either using something like pandas where you uh, look at the, at the stats, mean, median, and uh, the number of uh, blank values and all that, or you quickly do a plotting to uh, see the, the data distribution, right? Uh, again, everything that we had seen with pandas and, um, uh, uh, and, and matplotlib would do. And there is another library called Seaborn, which is a lot more uh, easy to use. And it is, uh, uh, I would say, the best friend of data science, data scientists, where it also integrates with pandas. But a lot of things that you do, two or three lines with matplotlib, can be done with one line in Seaborn. We'll look at examples, right? So the exploratory data analysis, the one part is trying to understand how good or bad your data is. That's the first step. Uh, and uh, trying to, let us say, you have any missing values, usually based upon whether it is a categorical data or whether it is a continuous data, you put, uh, if it's categorical, you put the mode value uh, into it, or if it's a continuous data, you put the mean value or the median value in those missing fields. Uh, and then let us say if uh, I have uh, three types of flowers that I'm trying to identify, but I only have 10 records for one of the flowers, but 100, 100 records for other two, then when I'm trying to build my model, my model is a lot more capable of identifying the other two flowers which have 100, 100 samples, but the sample which only has 10, obviously it, it would have a lot of false positives or false negatives, right? 
So then I need to manufacture the data for the third type also so that all of them have almost like 100, 100, 100 records so that your model is not skewed uh, towards one or the other uh, result value. So those are the things that you are trying to understand by exploratory data analysis. The other thing that you would do is, um, um, again, uh, I'm sure uh, you, you have the uh, next sessions where you would be um, uh, doing uh, machine learning and data science. So a lot of statistical algorithms uh, assume your data is a Gaussian distribution, which is a bell curve, right? Whether your data is fully bell curve or not, you need to uh, uh, look at the data. You need to plot it. You need to draw the probability distribution function or to see how your data is distributed. You need to draw the histograms. So that's all as part of your uh, data, uh, exploratory data analysis. So if your data is not a bell curve, then there are methods. You, you apply the logarithms or you apply uh, exponents or uh, or even if you are trying to do something like uh, forecasting, like Aroma models, they expect your data to be static, whether it's static or not. You, you, you need to possibly do a differentiation to make it static. So all this you will know only when you are plotting it and you are exploring the data using these charting techniques. So that's what we do as part of exploratory data analysis. Any questions so far? Is that too much of talking, too much of uh, Greek and Latin? Sir, yes. Seaborn library is bigger than the matplotlib, right? So yes. I think we, we can better to go for directly to Seaborn only. Then is it like that? Yes, yes, yes. But there are certain things that you can do in a simple manner with matplotlib. They they, they both okay. have their strengths, but Seaborn has certain things that it simplifies for certain kinds of charting. Right. Okay. HF has its own strengths and weaknesses, but Seaborn is a lot more easy to use on top of data frames uh, for data science kind of visualizations. But it, Matplotlib gives you more control. Seaborn automates a lot of okay. things, but Matplotlib gives you a lot more control. Okay, sir. Okay, good. Now let us jump in. So here I'm what, trying sir, to. One more, one more yes. thing is. When we are importing NumPy and then Pandas, we generally use the notations. But when coming to uh, Matplotlib, we go uh, in normal notation from Matplotlib. Why we go for? Are there any uh, scientific uh, science no, behind no, this? No, 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 no. Uh, it's it's just a Python technicality. Okay, I'll show you. So, if you see here, do you see here that import Matplotlib dot pyplot as FPLT? Uh, yeah. So, so anytime uh, you, hang on, just, just give me a second. My keyboard is misbehaving. So if you see here, um, when when you are trying to import, instead of doing it like this, right? I can see from uh, matplotlib import just a more syntax uh, syntax difference. They both are same. Okay. You're giving a package and a sub package and then giving alias here. Your package dot sub package and you're just giving alias dot p as plt. Okay, okay, sir. okay, good. Okay, now uh, back to yeah. So here you are uh, loading the data as I was telling you, right? You have an option to directly read CSV files into Pandas. Here I'm directly um, uh, taking the data from GitHub uh, for the Iris data set and loading it, right? So once I load it, then, uh, so this is the data uh, df dot column, sepal and sepal bit, petal and petal bit, and then uh, the value counts. How many values do I have uh, on for each species? So it's a df dot species, and these are the four values for the species, right? Versicolor, Setosa, and Virginica. Those are the three types of colors. And each has 50 50. 
and here is an earlier example that is like what if you only have 10 here right but they, if we are trying to build any machine learning models for them to behave uh, equally uh, well uh, and not to be uh, skewed towards one or the other uh, data set you need to manufacture some data maybe sometimes you just duplicate the data if nothing else you just duplicate and make it everything 50 50 50 right so that's the, the you're trying to look at the value counts so this is what you do and then when you're looking at the unique values what all values i have so that's uh, using this again this is all pandas so far we are only looking at pandas right and then um, i'm trying to create a new uh, column called color and in that column i'm putting uh, because uh, my uh, matplotlib needs the color to be uh, defined so in that i'm rather than me defining the color because i need to give the color for all the 150 i'm adding a column to the data frame and i'm saying uh, if uh, if the, it is setosa then take red if it is uh, virginica it take green um, so I'm, I'm just giving the values uh, in that new column and then i'm plotting plot uh, plt dot scatter i'm saying uh, scat plot on the sepal length and uh, sepal width and take the color from the df dot color the column that we added so it kind of plots the sepal length with the sepal width okay so, can you please mute uh, someone is talking okay so uh, maybe on the side one of you can just uh, quickly chat uh, and tell her that uh, she needs to mute so uh, this thing which needed so many lines where i had to add uh, a color column do it also i can receive it no it won't go to spam and all can one of you mute her yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I have checked my spam also. Because our school in South South, Radhika, madam, please meet your mind. Every time. But I am done. Hello, Radhika, madam. Radhika, madam. How can I tell you? Please mute. Madam, please remove her from the meeting. Yeah, because I'm sick all of you, sir. They have to be equipped with all these things and without clarification, all those issues. Because of... Oh, Radhika Garu! Radhika Garu! My inputs I want to give to extend to my students, actually. Yes, yeah, yeah. For that reason, only I... Uh, sorry, I am trying to call her, but uh, I think she forgot to mute herself. Okay, just uh, wait for a second. Yeah, yeah, definitely so. Is, is there any way you can remove her from the meeting so that uh, she yeah, can tell back? Radhika, madam. Radhika, madam. Radhika, madam. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Madam, please mute your uh, thing, madam. You are on phone and you are uh, you did not mute yourself. Disturbance or something. Class key. Please mute yourself. Good, good, good. Okay, perfect. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> So, um, so whatever we did, we had to add a color column and then use that color column uh, to draw this plot. With C1, again, the same example is there with the C1, right? With C1, I simply say S dot map. And again, I, I just have to set the set style uh, as a whiteboard, white grid. So I think someone was asking about a white grid. In C1, you just uh, give with one single thing, say you're saying just to draw a white grid. And then this facet grid, okay? So this facet grid, you can look at it more as when you are, uh, I'm sure all of you must have used Excel to do some kind of charting, right? So let us say in Excel, typically when you need to do some kind of pretty uh, charts, you first pivot the data, right? You put uh, whatever you want on X axis on one thing and Y axis on other thing, right? You can look at that facet grid that way, where you're first trying to kind of uh, build a pivot uh, for your chart and then once you build the pivot, you're simply saying the dot map is when you're uh, asking it to draw the chart, where you're saying just draw the scatter, and then I want uh, that scatter chart uh, to be for sepal length and sepal width. And then just uh, add legend. You're simply adding the legend. So with uh, Seaborn, with just these four lines, without even uh, bothering about uh, uh, giving a value to the colors or anything like that, you, you get a decent, uh, pretty looking chart 
with a matter of three to four lines. So the first thing you do is the facet grid where you are uh, trying to uh, give your data frame. And this their size, this five versus 10, it is just uh, uh, what you call the size of the chart. Um, so this big, big versus small, right? So uh, the size is very simple, okay? So you're saying uh, build that, um, uh, that uh, the kind of uh, load the data and, uh, uh, and you're defining the hue, what defines the color? The hue defines the color. Whatever you say as the hue, it takes that column for the color. So you're taking the data frame, you're defining which column will define the color and you're defining the chart. And then finally you're telling what chart to draw and what uh, data columns in that data frame to use, right? So that's as simple as uh, charting in CBOM, okay? Now we look at one more example. Okay, this is a very uh, um, very common chart that you will uh, uh, use for uh, simple data analysis on data sets with limited number of uh, attributes. In our case, this is called a pair plot. Pair plot is you want to see taking every two uh, uh, attributes, uh, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal length, every combination of two, two uh, fields, you want to see uh, if there is any combination which would uh, help us quickly identify what flavor a given data point is, and that's only possible when you don't have any overlaps on the colors. If you see here, there is no overlap here, right? So blue is very disjoint, far away. Orange is, there, there is a little bit of overlap, but more or less uh, it's uh, uh, separated out. So you're trying to identify this, there is something called uh, the principal component analysis, feature engineering, and uh, uh, eliminating uh, features, uh, pruning features, just so that your uh, uh, models uh, are easy to build and perform better. But this is trying to do some of it uh, using uh, visual inspection of the data. So here you are trying to see each of these to see if there is any combination of, uh, uh, of these features uh, which will help us uniquely identify the data and segregate the data into uh, different colors. Now, let us take a scenario. Looking at this pair plot, let us say all the colors in all the quadrants are always overlapping, right? No matter how sophisticated model you try to build, it will never be able to identify those flowers, right? Because missions are not magic. Machine learning can do things only when there is a way to do it, right? Now, if you're looking at this pair plot, and no matter any combination of those features you look at, always all three are overlapping. Then no matter how sophisticated machine learning model you bring, it will never be able to classify and segregate that data into three different labels, right? So that's what we are trying to identify. So looking at this, yes, there are certain combinations of those features with which we can uniquely identify each of those three types of flowers, right? So mostly this guy, uh, the sepal length, uh, with uh, along with uh, uh, petal length seems to be a good combination. There are some overlaps. So if, if you see this guy, yeah, there is a lot of overlap. If you see this guy, there is some overlap, right? So where it is overlap, then most probably uh, it, it won't help much. But there are few combinations which definitely have disjoint uh, regions. So which tells us using one or the other model, we should be able to build a model and should be able to uh, 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 to label any new data that we receive. So that's part of that visual data analysis, which is exploratory data analysis. Any questions on this? This is pair plot. Now drawing pair plot is so simple with uh, C1, where you're simply saying, say, take this whiteboard, the pair plot, and I'm saying, take these four columns, and um, you're saying who is the species, right? And then um, in diagonal. So what do you see on the diagonal is a histogram. You can you can have histogram, um, or uh, you 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 can uh, have a KD, which is uh, kind of uh, gives you the uh, the frequency distribution.
there you go so this is the 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 density density so in, instead of a histogram you are uh, looking at it more of uh, a smooth and curve uh, with kd kernel distribution kernel density uh, function okay so that's as simple uh, to do a pair plot with uh, uh, c bomb any questions on that okay good let us go on now let us take it a step further so if you are looking at uh, guys i think uh, is it okay if we go little further out uh, if not i i would have to quickly wrap up and give some time for doubts sir i have one doubt sir sure when i am plotting uh, two attributes common attributes right uh, i am trying i am trying ah uh, yes sir I am trying to trying to compare two features, sir. Okay. In labels, then I am not uh, I am unable to put the indexing uh, because uh, either it starts from zero or it starts from one or even if I count because when the number of attributes are more, uh, I am not unable to map those things, sir. So I am counting. Suppose I am working with the air pollution analysis, sir. Yes, what do I am trying to map with the different attributes? So I am counting and I am putting them in the uh, plot, but uh, it is saying that uh, not of same size. I am getting the error, sir. Yeah, you, they need to be same size. When you are trying to plot, ah, uh, sir. You you need to uh, have the two data sets. You are trying to plot them together, right? So you yes, need sir. both of them to be same size. You build first a data frame. with both okay. those attributes in one data frame as columns so if you are looking at this guy here the the, the line chart you see do you see this line chart here yeah. we the, the way you have number of children and number of pets in the same data frame you need to first bring those two metrics into one data frame as columns so that the same number of rows exist and then you try to plot very similar to what you see on my screen now ah uh, yes sir but actually if it is of a large data set 5 lakhs or 4 lakhs data set Fine. doesn't matter uh, how can how can i do that thing sir Just bring it into one data frame. Join, okay. join your two data sets and bring it into one data frame. Okay. No, I mean five million is nothing. Five lakhs is nothing. So indexing starts from zero only, no sir. Correct. Indexing, you can change the indexes, right? It's up to you. If you want to change index, you can change the index. But if you don't do anything, by default it starts with zero. Okay. Sir. But you can put any column you want as index. when you need to join two data frames you need to join them with the uh, index so you need to first set the index as the joining column and then uh, let us say you have two different data files there two different excel files load uh, two different data frames join them on the index and then uh, fill any you, you should not have any blank values you need to put some zero or something as a default value and then you should be able to plot and one more doubt sir so for the labels we have we need to con uh, convert compulsory strings into integers or we can no no no, no, no. no labels can be anything only thing is uh, your, your labels can be anything only your values that you are plotting should be integers okay thank you okay? thank you okay, thank you. so uh, then let, let me quickly go through this give me a few more 10 minutes will be done then i'll i'll let you guys ask questions okay so the probability density function and cumulative density function again i'm getting into a bit of statistics bear with me here i know you guys may be masters of statistics more than me uh, but so in the in our example that we had looked at here let us say if i am trying to take let us say if i am taking this combination they have such a big overlap then obviously my uh, results would be pretty bad right so wherever uh, my overlap is less so of all the four looks like if i am just taking one metric only one field to uh, label the data right if i am doing univariate uh, uh, labeling then looking at the four looks like this guy the sepal uh, petal bed would be the ideal candidate because this guy has the highest overlap right so when we are trying to identify how bad my uh, how bad my uh, labeling will be Uh, if i am just taking one versus other column then what you do is you just uh, do a probability distribution function with a cumulative distribution function to see what percentage of your labels will be 
wrongly labeled. Okay, so that's where the uh, the probability density function will uh, come in. Okay, so if you are looking at this guy here, so if if I am trying to build the probability density function for this, then I'll uh, with a, with a, sorry cumulative density function, I'll get to know what percentage of the data that's represented by yellow will be misclassified if I'm just looking at this petal width as my main uh, criteria to segregate the data. So that's where you get the uh, you use the probability density function. So here again, I won't uh, get into the details, uh, the math details. So basically, probability density function is you're taking a histogram and you're trying to uh, see what percentage of the data is in each of those buckets, and then you're doing a uh, cumulative density function, so which goes up to one, right? So here I'm taking one metric, which is uh, I think sepal length or sepal width, and then I'm trying to do a probability density function for one data. Now to see when I am trying to combine these data sets, then how bad my prediction will be. Now, let us say if I take uh, petal width as my criteria, and if I take anything between, say, 3 and 5 is, say, Setosa, then, so now what percentage of the data, uh, say, versicolor, this is the, the, the uh, red, say, is uh, Virginica, and say the blue, the brinjal color is Setosa. So technically, my uh, if I take five as the point, so five percent, close to uh, so twenty percent of my Virginica uh, will be misqualified, classified. So by doing your CDF and uh, PDF, you can identify how good or bad your prediction will be based on any one metric you are looking at. So those are two. Um, uh, to statistical uh, metrics that you use when you are trying to do univariate analysis, right? Now, how to draw? It's very simple, right? I'm taking the same thing. I'm simply um, taking the uh, the frequency distribution, and then I'm calculating the cumulative density and the uh, the probability density, and I'm doing a simple plot, a line chart on that one uh, metric. So here, what I did is, so basically first. I divided data into three different, based on the species, I divided it into three data sets, right? Three data frames. So now, for each of these data frames, I calculated the, the PDF and CDF, right? Here, I calculated the PDF and CDF, okay? And then I just plotted it. So Setosa, Virginica, and Versicolor on the petal length, and then just plotted all of it. This is more for univariate analysis on that specific uh, labeling of those three colors, univariate analysis using petal length to see if I just uh, take uh, a range of values, how well my data can be classified, right? So this is all part of your analysis to understand, let us say you have to pick only one field based on which you need to segregate the data, which field would that be? You can you can draw this kind of a chart for each of those uh, four variables: sepal and sepal, sepal width, petal and petal width, and then draw it. That's one. Now let us look at a quick bar chart, the box plot. Again, so median versus uh, mean. There are certain scenarios where your uh, most of your statistical uh, algorithms, uh, where you are drawing Gaussian distribution, it is on the standard deviation and uh, mean, but a lot of times, the, your median and uh, your quantiles do a better job at uh, uh, at analyzing the data, right? So if you're doing a box plot, you're taking the median and you're taking 25 percentile and 75 percentile, and you're trying to see how big of an overlap you have for a given range of values. So the same thing that we had, saw, uh, we had seen with the CDF and PDF, the same thing you're looking at here by looking at the uh, the box plot, where if you are trying to draw a line here around five, so you will get to see what percentage of the data would be impacted, right? Again, uh, exploratory data analysis is an ocean in itself, so I'm focusing a lot more on the charting here, but just I want to briefly touch on some of the exploratory data analysis techniques that you use to analyze the data, but the focus is a lot more on the capabilities of Seaborn and the, the different kinds of charts, right? 
And then finally, you have violin chart, which is a combination of your uh, box plot and your CDF PDF, right? So the uh, probability dis uh, density you are combining with the uh, box plot, and that becomes a violin chart, right? So all this, as you can see here, again, there is really nothing much the rocket science here. I'm simply saying a dot uh, violin plot and saying uh, x equal to species, y equal to petal length, and uh, data is in the data frame, and uh, boom, just size. So again, there, there's not really much in the uh, in it. I'll, uh, when I share these things, you should be able to see the syntaxes. They're pretty uh, simple. Uh, and even if you Google also, you'll find a lot of examples. But um, but this is just to give you a glimpse of the capabilities of Seaborn and Matplotlib and Pandas. Any questions, guys? Sir, yeah, sir. Uh, uh, line number sixty-six and sixty-seven. Uh -huh. So we are giving input to uh, uh, sixty-six years. So we are giving input uh, uh, by taking input to that uh, Seaborn library. But right. at the output, it is giving the Matplotlib. At the same time, Correct. 67 or so, we are giving, uh, taking the library Seaborn. Right. Output is doing. You mean to say that uh, the basic functional can be filled by the Matplotlib? Seaborn uses Matplotlib under the roof. OK. But Seaborn simplifies a lot of things. That's what I was saying, you, right? Seaborn is, uh, it, it yeah. automates a lot yeah. of things. But uh, if you are trying to, uh, you're no longer presenting. So it looks like uh, someone took away my presentation. Anyway, I'm almost done. So uh, you, if you want control, then use Matplotlib. But if you want things to be done quickly, uh, it, uh, your uh, Seaborn has very good integration with Pandas. And you can do a lot of interesting things with Seaborn directly on Pandas. Sir, so, so you mean to say that Pandas basically works on the NumPy library, right? To do Data handling, NumPy under, should be there, under right? The hood, the, under the hood, it is NumPy. Yeah, yeah. In the same way that Seaborn uh, depends on, I mean, works on Matplotlib. Correct, correct. Yeah, you correct. can say that. Yeah, thanks. Hope this session was helpful. Really helpful, sir. Yes, sir. Very informative session, sir. Good. For the beginners, sir. <laughs> We just got a lot of information, sir. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I had to go somewhat fast because I had to cover so much ground. I mean, I I usually take this over a week uh, for in the data science course that I teach. So th this is a one week thing, a little over a week, I would say. So can we can we contact you through email uh, if for other any queries? Yeah, you can. I cannot promise how quickly I can respond because I, I have my own software company. And as you know, uh, getting quality developers is such a big challenge here. So I do most of work myself. Uh, we are into product development. Okay. So but sure, I'll, I'll try to respond however soon I can. Sure. And, yeah, I mean, teaching is my passion. So I, I just do it for fun. Uh, but uh, my day job is, uh, is I have my own software company where we do product development. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, Ravi Garu, can I share your PPTs and material with the participants? Uh, sure, I will be uh, sending uh, these notebooks, ma'am. I don't uh. have any PPT here. I, I usually don't use PPTs. I typically do more like a working sessions where I execute yeah, the code yeah. and display it. So yeah. I'll share these notebooks. Uh, there is one place where I used one data file. I'll even uh, zip it up into a, a zip file and I'll send it to you. And then you can uh. share it with me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Please do do that, sir. Otherwise, uh, I mean, I, I can say the same with the uh, participants. Definitely. Okay. Sir, your mail ID, sir. Uh, mail ID is ravi at hallmarksolutions.com. I'll, I'll ping it in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, so in chat box, sir. Yep, yep. We'll do, we'll do. It is the chat in Google Teams. Yeah, here it is. Yep, I'm sending it.
So if no other questions, we can call it wraps. Thank you, sir. Very excellent and important session, sir. Thank you so much. Madam, you have sent uh, keys, ma'am, instead of attendance link. Pardon? No, instead of attendance, you have sent the quiz madam, link. Madam, you sent the quiz link, madam. I have sent the link, sir, in your chat box. Please do see that. No, that is no, quiz, no, quiz, link. Is a, quiz link, ma'am, not attendance. Yeah. See, be clear. What, what? That is quiz link, madam, quiz link. Yeah, this is our giver. We need to see your, uh, how attentive you people are, na? <laughs> I am seeing only 168 people online. Yesterday there were 234. Okay. No, no, this, this is quizzing, ma'am. Is it uh, uh, to be submitted now or what is this, ma'am? You can submit. You can submit, sir. You can submit. So there is no submit time. Maximum time. Pardon? Maximum time. Normally you send it to the platform, ma'am. That is why. The quiz link, uh, I will be sharing it with you. Madam, I'm dropping. Pardon? I'm dropping. Huh? No, I'm just telling you that I'm dropping. Hope, hope you guys are good, right? Uh, no more questions. Ah, uh, drop open, madam. Uh, the thank, questions you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank Any you. questions? Uh, participants? Uh, so, uh, Ravi Garu? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you very much. Ma'am, all the links are attendance quiz link. Sir, thank please you. don't worry about the attendance or quiz. Let me finish up this session, please. It's our minimum courtesy to thank the presenter, uh, Ravi Garu. In fact, one my coordinator, uh, Professor Suma, is she online? Yes, yes, I am online. Yeah, then off over to you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for your... Uh, wonderful session i think participants have been uh, able to understand the concepts of uh, pre processing uh, uh, data analysis and data visualization and importance of this data visualization uh, thank you very much for your sparing your valuable time and uh, enriching our participant participants in this area thank you very much sir my pleasure Anna. thank you thank you ravi garu Okay. Participants, you can answer the both the uh, quiz also at this moment. And uh, today we will not share the quiz in the WhatsApp group. Today we want to share in all in the chat box. Yes, ma'am. Is there uh, any separate attendance form? Uh, attendance link will link is also shared. And uh, quiz link is also shared. Quiz My link was shared just now. And, and attendance also you, you share, ma'am. Yeah, I have So that actually. all can uh, uh, complete it uh, at this moment. It ma'am, we require yeah. time, ma'am, for quiz. Ma'am, we we'll require time for quiz. Oh, ma'am, can you tell us any questions? Uh, participants, any questions? Ma'am, ma attendance there? link is not there. Only the quiz links are there. All the okay. links are from quiz links. Okay, okay. I will repost it. Don't worry. No, okay, no, no. I have already posted. I just wanted to see how attentive you people are. I have already no, ma posted. Ma'am, ma'am, ma it's not there, ma'am. 
Excuse me, ma'am. The both the links which you have sent is uh, related to quiz. None of this is uh, related to attendance. W eight is attendance link, and just now X three two nine is quiz link. Anyway, I'm sharing it again for you. The so both the links are X three two nine, ma'am. Which you have sent. X three two nine are quiz link. Yes. W eight are uh, uh, attendance uh, link. Okay. Ma'am, go now. Now I'm there. That's not I'm there. Don't worry. Don't just, worry. Just, yes, yes. I'm just now we received. Ah, so we received, ma'am. Just now. Okay. I'm sharing it. Uh, is it visible now? Yeah, yeah, visible. Yes, ma'am. Madam, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Just now we received. Both of us have shared it. What about the timing for quiz, ma'am? Uh, Excuse me, ma'am. Complete, ma'am. Timing. Quiz timing. टेकिंगली uh attendance so don't worry you okay, will be getting okay thank you ma'am thank you and tomorrow we will be dealing with the basics of uh, statistics and all probability base name mathematics mathematic essentials for data science data science so all of you be present uh by sharp 3 pm and what today the attendance is very less i believe then No, everybody was there, ma'am. Like here and there, network issues, so they run out, and after that, they can't. Ma'am, can you share the, both the links in YouTube? Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, 